All right, we should be, we should be good momentarily. Right. I'm gonna give us our uh, obligatory like ten it seconds. It looks, it looks promising. Thing until we actually show up on the magic box in my hand. I wonder how long. Abracadabra. Well, still nothing. I'm assuming. I see us. Oh, We're on really? the TV. Why ain't that a bitch? Why the fuck's my phone not? Hey, there it goes. <laughs> Look at it. Hello to uh, everyone in the chat. Scott, Dave, Beats and Tapes. Dude, what up? Z Pain. Hello, hello, everyone. We've got. Uh, we got Diddy to talk about. There's actually, look, there's a lot to talk about. David just went for three and a half hours, so wow. we're going to have to play catch up on that. And then uh, Corey has been getting absolutely ass fucked on his lawsuits the last few days. Well, that's good. And then David lost his tax exemption. So really, you know, our enemies have been smoting. Well, I mean, we knew the clock was ticking. It wasn't like a questionable case. We always knew they were going to lose. We always knew we would win in the long run. There was not a chance of them winning. That's what made it funny. (laughs) (laughs) It really is. The fact fact that a guy who was like, look, when I was six, the the Air Force (laughs) made me psychic, and then I talked to chickens on Mars. And they're like... I think I got a strong chance at winning this game. Like, no, you're, you're a fucking nut job. You're literally a crazy person. But, oh, you're out. You're telling me I didn't go with them. Okay. But I think, uh, God, maybe if I can get enough time during the week, I'll bang out just like a quick episode where I just read through the court documents or something. Because there's there's like a lot, and I don't uh, I don't want to necessarily devote an entire yeah. episode to it because we got a lot of David coming up too. So uh, we will see now. Uh, do we do we start with Diddy? It feels like it's a big I guess. It's also there's a lot to this document. It is 73 pages. I have not read all of it yet. I only read what page? I got to uh, yeah, about page 7. I read about the pink cocaine. Oh, I didn't see that. I haven't gotten that far yet. Well, pink cocaine sounds pretty good, if but, I'm, I'm going to be honest. No, those people, they fucked it up, though. That's not pink cocaine. That's Tusi. Tusi. Well, they they clarified that in the article, but the why, the New York Post had to explain it for white yeah, yeah, people yeah. in the headlines. They're like, eh, call it pink cocaine. But a Tusi is, it, uh, oddly enough, it has nothing to do with 2CB, which you would think it would eh. be 2C or 2C. No, G7. it's not that straightforward. No, I believe it's a, it's a mix of uh, ketamine, coke, and then I think MDMA. Little Molly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it sounds pretty rad, to be honest. Yeah, the you know, the kids are all right. They're really putting it all together. And I like that they've, you know, started combining drugs regularly now. I do appreciate the branding we're seeing rolling. Yeah. Out. Because before, you know, drugs, I guess maybe we have the, the legal weed market to thank for this, but before drugs just got sold in you know like shitty ziploc bags and stuff yeah i remember in college some guy uh i guess i can't say who because he's got a normal job now a guy knew sold weed (laughs) he used to take uh you know the like cellophane that comes on a cigarette pack yeah. And he would package eights and that, and then he would heat seal it. Which I, oh, I actually thought that was, like, pretty... I mean, look, if you're low on materials... But in terms of, like, college drug dealing level, heat sealed packaging is pretty impressive. I, I wouldn't have yeah. put that together. Yeah. Where How did I end up here? Oh, right. Pink cocaine. Yes. I think that's kind of like a nice branding move to, to you know i mean it sounds you know look it, you're obviously pitching this to women which is funny yeah. that diddy was doing it yeah yeah yeah. i don't know why diddy's doing women's drugs other than to you know loosen his asshole up well i'll tell you i think uh the big mystery to me is whether diddy's the top or a bottom really well maybe we'll find out in the course of this uh i think the reason diddy wants women around i'm, I'm doing the math hot women attract guys yeah. Guys then get fed a bunch of pink cocaine. Yeah, you get them all mauled up. And then... <laughs> They're you, more pliable. You go to town. And then you ass. say, do you want a record deal? Yes. Well, I believe... Uh, so How badly do you want said record deal? I don't... I, I think it'll be in the part I'm about to read. But yes, he does tell someone, like, if you do this, I'll make you a producer of the year at the Grammys. Of course. You know how many of these are going to come out? If you were coked up and on Molly, you know how many people you'd offer a job so they'd suck your dick? But also... I would be offering jobs left and right. (laughs) 
Yeah, Are you getting yeah, yeah. high while my yeah, dick yeah. sucked? Yeah. Yeah, you want to intern for the summer? Okay, dude. There is a certain level of intoxication where you do just start making promises <laughs> that you can absolutely oh, not keep. On cocaine, I've probably never made more promises that weren't going to be kept. <laughs> but you just, that thing is so important in the moment that it has to happen. I'm willing to say yeah. anything to make it happen. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You would be a marketing executive, sweetheart. But I, I do think in the, the year of our Lord, 2024, if you are falling for the I'm going to make you a star ruse. I mean, I don't know. It worked for Meek Mill. And Diddy did make a bunch of stars. So I feel like that's the problem, especially with Harvey Weinstein, too. Yeah. It's like, well, the movies were fucking good. OK, so <laughs> I don't know what to make of the trauma involved in. But he might be a monster, but he did some cool shit. Yeah, and they weren't, these aren't D level celebrities. He we're is responsible about, for Biggie. Yeah, we're talking about A list rap, rap yeah. royalty, really. Not gay people. No. That's Although, why it's so shocking, really. In, in retrospect, you know, the name Puff Daddy sounds. Look, everything in hindsight, you go, huh, that was a little fruity. <laughs> Yeah, you're just like, ah, this is all actually gayer than I remember. Yeah, Puff Daddy now sounds like a command he'd give to somebody who just gave a line of, <laughs> line of twosie. Maybe that's why he kept changing it, because he thought it was too out in the open. That's they going to figure yeah. me out. <laughs> Where he just keeps raping people. He's like, I'll just change my name. I'll just change my name. I'll just shorten it. A P no, Diddy. that was Puff Daddy who That was two you. rapes ago. <laughs> <laughs> the artist. The rape is formerly known as Giddy. Uh, but yeah, what happens if all the rappers are gay? That's it's going to be... I mean, I, I guess. I've never thought of something that could kill an entire genre. Yeah. But if enough high-profile high, high profile rappers uh, gave up the butt... A genre so focused on braggadocio and... Uh, it would be tough to survive. It really would. And also, you know, I've tried... There are openly gay rappers like uh, Kevin Abstract... I can't listen to that shit. No, because it ruins it. Well, it just fucks up the the vibe. Like, yeah, to, to be. I remember listening to. I think it was a Brock Hampton song, and you just start talking about sucking a guy's dick. Well, I was, I was gonna like, say, oh, I don't. I don't need a gay. Want to hear this? Yeah, I don't need a gay man's thoughts in my head. I try to get rid of those thoughts. Yeah, yeah I purge them. Yeah, I, I put I don't, them deep inside. I don't need to. T you know, I'm not all on board with the music is programming, but if you listen to a man talk about sucking dick long enough, I feel like you might fuck around and try. It, it might get in there. Yeah, maybe this is a new theory we can start. Where if you play old P Diddy records backwards, it's got gay programming. In it's it. got gay slurs in it. Well, they got what? Is it, 432 hertz is the, like the healing yeah. energy. There's you got to find the gay one yeah there's a gay the gay, gay people do probably vibrate at a higher level they've they've they're you know it, you can when you meet a, a truly gay guy yeah there is like a different energy about it i'm gonna there. get invent a gaydar just by finding out one of those frequency <laughs> guns and just yeah, yeah. walking up to dudes and be like ah sorry dude according to the gun you're gay <laughs> we can use one of those like ghost hunting devices <laughs> the fucking emf reader all right uh let's get into this this is uh, summary of events. The oh, good, I did plug it in. I thought I forgot for a second. This uh, part here is about Mr. Jones, and this Mr. Jones fella was he produced uh, Mike last... Jones? <laughs> I wish, Damn. I wish. No, good for Mike for staying away from this. He uh, this guy produced Diddy's love album that came out, now. Gay Love, uh, yeah, well, yes, yeah, <laughs> came out. A year ago, maybe? Something like that. But uh, he has quite a few grievances. I'll be honest. Air. Diddy's music always kind of sucked. I've never enjoyed Yeah, he's not yeah. a good rapper. No. And the most famous song he produced is just a Led Zeppelin song. He just yeah. took cashmere and then did the Godzilla I mean, he's soundtrack. a very good businessman. He clearly understands leverage. Well, yeah, because he fucking he put cameras in all the rooms. That's what house. I mean. He clearly knew what he was doing. The the It seems the best way to get rich is to build blackmail to build a fuck mansion and then put a bunch of cameras <laughs> that'd be so funny if you went to black rock you're yeah, like yeah. look i got a great business proposition yeah. make me the ceo of a fortune 500 company i'm gonna get a big ass mansion with secret tunnels and we're gonna just you know cameras and mics in the entire place i'm gonna go on shark tank yeah. <laughs> mr cuban <laughs> All right, hear me out a uh, gay sex island <laughs> we're gonna and how do how do i turn a profit Blackmail on high-profile clients. Yes, we we film the world's richest, most powerful man <laughs> sucking a penis. It's, this is a 500x reward. Okay, the yeah. the pro the earn on interest is incredible. I'm looking for 20 million dollars. <laughs> 
<laughs> you could control literal nations for just a $20 million me, investment. If you don't give me the money, I'm going to release the video of you <laughs> sucking a dick. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Summary of events. Uh, oh, yeah. Here, from September 22 to uh, November of 23, Mr. Jones produced nine songs on Mr. Cohn's album. But that's not why we're here. I don't give a fuck about him not paying his producers. Mr. Jones has secured irrefutable evidence of the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. Damn. Now, uh, well, first... I, I think there might be a good chance, and this is based on absolutely nothing but a feeling, and I'm pretty good when it comes to drug feelings. I think Diddy might have been producing his own GHB because it's really fucking easy to make. And what do you mean he hired like a chemist to do it? You wouldn't even need that. GHB is like super simple. So I, I think if you've got uh, the blackmail mansion. So you think he just made a lot and was like, well, I might as well sell some of it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. I think. Uh, <laughs> Well, it, the, the this thing, is the, see, this is truly some of the things I would fear if I had too much money like this. Yeah, is I could just do shit like that. Be yeah. Like you know, GHB is kind of hard to get. I'll spend ten million dollars and just build a factory. Well, the the and it's like, well, now I'm producing eight tons of GHB a month. Like I do something with yeah, it. So I, I'm a un, uh, I'm a reluctant you know, drug and lord. I'm a businessman, <laughs> so I'm gonna be like, okay, well, I know people who will buy this. Part of the problem with uh, date rape drugs is even the people selling them don't want you to use them to rape people. Yeah. So if you're consistently buying a ton of GHB, someone's probably gonna notice. So Look, when Bill Cosby's one of your top clients, yeah, yeah I go, yeah. huh. Is yeah. this being used for good? Yes, there's a good chance that the guy who's going to parties all the time isn't actually on GHB because that's not necessarily a party drug. That's more yeah. uh, all end, the, now end the party permanently drug. In his defense, if I'm doing, you know, Coke and Molly on the regular. Might need a little downer. I might need something, you know, calm me down at the end of the day. That's true. It's a, Life is about balance. <laughs> now, once again, if I had that kind of money, I'm drinking the finest lean, you know, money can buy, but yeah, to each their own. Well, the problem is lean, you know, there's no more uh, activists or Qualitech anymore, so you got to drink walk. And there, there used to be... Uh, fuck, there was another brand that was, like, even better than activists that was... Uh, it was like a cream... Cream orange flavor, but it well, was... my pharmacy in Utah made it from scratch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish we could do this. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, that'd be dangerous. Yeah. We would die. Well, you know, I'm... I can't be trusted with that. I've come to the conclusion I'm invincible because if, if that last round didn't get me, look, I'm. Uh... I'm I mean, it would be the. I mean, it would. <laughs> it would be the best death happy. ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no! If I die, please highlight real me saying I'm never gonna die. That'd be so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's the same way I've been enjoying Corey Good. Uh, someone's <laughs> been posting videos of him talking about how he's gonna win all the lawsuits and everything, <laughs> and then to juxtapose that with him you know, losing, losing entire, all the lawsuits. Yeah, his entire life. It's very funny. All right. Uh, displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms. That's a big one. Yeah, that's one that'll get you some real time. You never want to get involved in firearms distribution. Well, and the other thing to remember is, like, if they raid three of your property simultaneously... You're fucked. Yeah, they probably already know what they're looking for, or they already have it. Or in this case, they probably were destroying evidence that made the government look bad. Yeah, well, I had a, I had a friend get popped for some, like, a crate of SKSs going somewhere they shouldn't have been going that is yeah that's a very serious charge yeah right? i mean if he dies he's definitely a fed mr combs providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors ah, and that's sex a problem workers. see this is why i'm saying the ghb i think he was uh that's true look his home brewing so he could dose all these people it's too easy to do a few drops and you know 120 pound lady yeah she gone. So he's providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors and the sex workers. Actually, I'll wait to be disgusted until I know if it's men or women. But, but wait, why are you drugging sex workers? Because it's that, fun. I guess maybe you just enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, why would Bill Cosby do to all those ladies? Maybe I don't understand the mind. Because it's pretty sick. <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> the mind of a sexual deviant. Because to me, the way my, my mind does the math is he's doing it to minors because they wouldn't consent otherwise, right? That's just good old-fashioned rape. Uh, I mean, you could also argue they're smaller and you wouldn't need it. That's, that's true. <laughs> but I think there's a hope in drugging them that you can then use the cl like cloudy memory against them. I think that's probably just the general strategy is to not have any of these ladies remember 
But it's also as easy to drug juice as it is a drink. But well, now that you said that, maybe maybe this is like an MK Ultra type thing where Diddy was was kidnapping these people and fucking just drugging them to the gills to to make them forget everything so they couldn't remember. I mean, that's what I would do. There was a guy, uh, not the toy, not the toy box killer, but someone who had a similar setup. But he would kidnap these women and rape them, and he, he held them in like some underground compound. But at the end. That's what he would do is he'd just fucking give him a ton of drugs. Yeah, just and then, you know, have him black out. Yeah, and then drop him off in the middle of nowhere. He didn't get caught for a long time because everyone, like, they couldn't remember shit. I mean, look, if you wake up after blacking out, you're going to go, for the sake of your psyche, you're going to go, ah, I guess nothing actually happened. Well, who are you talking to? <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, I've, I've had a share and everyone else, <laughs> and everyone else is share blacking out. <laughs> Okay, uh, where was I? Mr. Combs, Chief of Staff, Christina Corum, KK, well, so close, uh, Damn. instructing her staff to retrieve drugs so she can provide it to Mr. Combs for his consumption. Quickly, damn it, go get Diddy his fucking cocaine. That does sound like... Oh, he's going to be a nightmare if we don't get him his cocaine. You know, if you could just get rid of all the rape, this is like he had a good setup. All he had to do was not rape. Yeah, he was a billionaire, basically. Why do they have to rape? <laughs> <laughs> they all rape. That's We're going to go to one of the fucking the, those those money seminars and be like, just, yeah. <laughs> just don't rape. Yeah. just If you don't rape, you can be rich. Well, the same way the, the NBA gathers all the rookies and tells them not to blow all their money on dumb shit. We're going to have yeah. to start doing that to all these rich people. But but I would think I just watched the Patriots documentary and it was Chris Carter telling Aaron Hernandez, <laughs> stop smoking Kush. Yeah, yeah. And well, then he went on to kill those people. Yeah, he had a bit of a bigger problem. Yeah. He <laughs> wasn't rape, but murder. So uh, yeah. everyone's got their vices. Look, like, some <laughs> in retrospect, the Kush was not that big a deal. Some... <laughs> he would have been chilling. He should have smoked a lot more weed. It was actually gun. actually the murderous urges he had. <laughs> yeah, he should have smoked a lot. Uh, a lot more weed and done a lot less murdering. Yeah, Chris gave him bad advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was focused on the wrong thing. But I, I would like to think, you know, if I was a fucking a billionaire like Diddy, Diddy has at least several hundred million dollars. Yeah. And he is surrounded by beautiful women constantly and has all the drugs he wants. How is that not good enough? I mean, apparently, apparently he needed it weirder. I mean... <laughs> Cat Williams said, you got to tell Diddy no. Diddy be wanting to party. Yeah, yeah he was right. You got to tell him no. God, what a fucking freak. I mean, we should. I guess we should listen to Cat Williams more, even though he's a chronic liar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's a fun liar. He's the great, <laughs> one of the greatest liars of all time. Yeah, I fucking... Okay, uh, Christian Combs... Oh, that's a son. Drugging and sexually assaulting a woman. Yeah, that's how I could tell it was probably bad. It's because he made it a family affair like it was a cartel. Yeah, this is like Saddam Hussein with Uday and Kusay. Yeah, just letting your kids inherit your rape sex trafficking empire. <laughs> like, why don't you teach them how to fucking make a record, did he? Yes. They couldn't take the other family business? He was doing it. It's like the Lion King. He was showing them his rape dungeon. He's like, one day all this will, <laughs> all this land will belong to you. Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes. Wait, isn't that the the, that's a, the white the, televangelist dude? No, I think that's a... Isn't that a singer? No, I don't think so. I think that's literally a bishop. Oh, black guy. Oh, okay. uh, I was about to say, that's that can't be a white man. But he is an American pastor. Okay. Well, good for him. Well, you got to have pastor around when you're doing all the sinning. It's kind of <laughs> like a drive through forgiveness. You just call up the pastor and be like, yeah, you know, I fucked up. And I goofed again. How many Hail Marys? Yeah, he doesn't have a choice but to forgive you due to the nature of the <laughs> Lord's love and all that. Okay. Uh, young. Oh, sorry. Right. That. Uh, so he was going to use the bishop to soften the impact of his public image on the Cassie Ventura lawsuit. We covered that many months ago, and that was the one that uh, I think he paid five million the next day to get that dropped. Well, I mean, that was or settled, you know, not dropped. Seeing as how far it's gone, I guess that was a good business decision. Yeah. 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 It turns out he probably should have spent a lot more money yeah. to avoid this. Yeah. Boy. Although I guess you can't pay off the feds. Uh, Unless you are a fed. Yeah. Young Miami's cousin and or assistant sexually assaulting Mr. Jones. Wait, this guy got sexually assaulted by uh, a woman? What's going on here? Sexually assaulting or sexually assaulted by? Young Miami's cousin or assistant sexually assaulting Mr. Jones. That's the producer. Maybe it was a guy. Actor... <laughs> 
actor Cuba. Oh Vick man, Jr. Cuba again! Isn't he? Isn't he already in court for like two other counts of sexual harassment? I think so. Yeah, didn't? It? Damn, they still have good cocaine somewhere. Didn't he? Didn't he do a movie called like Rape Boat or something? Well, that's probably not the title. I doubt I that was the title. Yeah. yeah, wasn't there a movie called like? Uh... I mean, Rape Boat could be funny. I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to read the script. Uh, what's that? Boat boat trip. Yes. <laughs> well, it's in, from two thousand two. <laughs> it was. It was all they were trying to tell us. Even what is back the then. plot? <laughs> uh, I don't remember. I saw it when I was, you know, whatever, twelve years old, and there was a bunch of titties in the beginning, and that's kind of that's the best of my yeah, I mean, recollection. About all that mattered. Yeah. Uh, rapper redacted. Ooh, uh, we have a mystery to solve. I hope we can figure this out. Uh oh. On Mr. Combs' yacht, consorting with underage girls, sex workers. All and... right. But what's consorting mean? Because that's either really bad or overblown. Yeah. That's uh, that's one of them weasel words. Yeah. I mean, yeah. A whole, whole lot of different. Look, things. if I just talk to the underage girls, I have not committed a crime. I don't like them describing it like that. So underage girls, sex workers, and R&B singer also redacted. Mr. Combs, Los Angeles home, consorting with underage girls and sex workers. Oh, no. If I had to guess, rapper probably Meek Mill, based on the way things have been going. R&B I mean, singer, we know I, he's in here somewhere. I mean, who? Usher? It could be, although Usher, Usher famously has a small penis, based on uh, the words of... Uh, well, we could find that out in the details. Grin Superhead Steffens. Well, that's unfortunate for him. All right, what is this? Oh, this is just a shooting. <laughs> Who cares about a murder? Yeah, the murder's not that interesting. Yeah. Someone... A rapper having someone killed? Oh, God. Yeah, someone got shot outside the studio. Oh, there's there's pictures of it. Oh, oh well, that's go, that's good to know. There we go. Mr. Jones was sexually harassed and assaulted by Mr. Combs. Oh, no, did he gay? This is the other part I still don't get. Him being gay? Well, no, that, that, uh, <laughs> any man. I would... don't get it. How does this yeah. gay sex work? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Anyone with a sufficient enough quantity of the aforementioned drugs might get to a little gay <laughs> shit at a certain point. I, I understand uh. that. Uh, what I don't get is, you know, the previous part said he got this guy gets sexually assaulted by uh, the other young Miami's cousin. Right. Why do people keep hanging out where they're getting sexually assaulted? Not to victim blame. Uh, if I get raped by one dude, I'm yeah. not going back to work to where <laughs> that dude is. Yeah. I like to avoid being butt fucked. I mean, by any means necessary. I mean, I guess they want to keep their job. I'm sure the pay was pretty good. But, yeah, uh, I mean, he is, you know, a producer. I'm not sure the pay is worth your ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout his time living with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was the victim of constant, unsolicited, <laughs> and unauthorized uh, of his anus. Wait, hold on a second. Hold Const on. Constant, unsolicited, <laughs> and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus. <laughs> Wait, that's no. a horrific way to describe it how do you even get put it how is he touching your asshole like how, it doesn't say his ass it says specifically his dude he was going he's going for an oil check bro what, is he just producing an assless chaps like, <laughs> dude, he's just demanding everyone i i can only think if your ass is out <laughs> Uh, he's just walking around fingering people's asshole. Yeah, well, he treats it. Also, like... how many times are you going to let Diddy finger, finger your asshole before you tell him to knock it off? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Constant? Constant. Yeah. Constant is a very specific phrase. Look, one, one time, shame on him. Yeah. Constantly. Occasionally, as a goof? Okay, maybe, yeah, sure. Maybe he just rubs the ass like that that uh, tree stump at the Apollo they rub for good luck. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me just finger your ass a little bit. It helps me rap. Uh... These events took place in L.A., New York, Florida, and the United States Virgin Damn. Islands. All I really know about the United States Virgin Islands is that's where you should go if you want to commit sex crimes. That does seem to be the location. That seems to be the spot from what I've seen. Maybe we should just get rid of islands. Islands seem to all be bad news. It's where uh, bad shit happens. I mean, look, anytime you need that kind of a isolation yet luxury, not a good combo. In addition to the unsolicited and unauthorized touching, I like that they repeat that, Mr. Jones was forced by Mr. Mr. Combs to work in Mr. Combs's bathroom. As Mr. All right, look, Combs, dude, at some point, there's got to be a little, you know, personal responsibility. As Mr. Combs walked around naked and showered in a clear glass enclosure. What? Yeah, no, this is at least part of this is this guy's fault. He's not 
look, he's not completely clean in this incident. I can't imagine ever having a job where my my boss would be like, "I'm gonna get naked, come into the bathroom with yeah. me, and we'll we'll just we'll talk this through. We'll just keep working this out. But first, let me touch your asshole, <laughs> <laughs> just for good luck. Yeah, yeah, just to get my thoughts going. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta wake up a little bit as a heterosexual. <laughs> this is the other move they always uh... do. After they describe being raped a hundred <laughs> yeah. times without ever doing anything to try and stop it. Like, actually, I'm super straight. Actually, <laughs> I love that they're like, I need it on the record that I'm not gay yes, at all. Uh, let the record reflect no gay shit. Yeah. No, no ditty, as the kids yes. now say. As a heterosexual Christian man, Mr. Jones was uncomfortable with Mr. Cone's advances <laughs> and expressed his discomfort to Mr. Cone's chief of staff, Christina Corum. So he didn't even tell Diddy to knock it off. He told his manager. That's so funny. He'd be like, can someone tell Diddy to stop fingering my asshole? <laughs> I, I, I think it'd be better. I'd tell him myself, but I don't want to get fired. KK responded to Mr. Jones' complaint with, you know, Sean will be Sean. That, this might be this phrase right here. <laughs> Sean, Sean will be Sean. Uh, he, hey, Diddy keeps uh, fingering my asshole. Can you tell him something about that? Well, you know, Sean will be Sean. What are you going to do? If anyone says this about you, very rarely <laughs> does blank will be blank you use no. a positive circumstance. No, it's always horrific. It usually means you're a huge asshole, but you're talented, yeah. so they can't tell you. You're that. either talented or you're rich. KK also attempted to downplay uh, Mr. Combs' groping ah. Mr. Jones's anus and genitals. Oh, now. God, just fondling your balls? He's working the front and the back as friendly horseplay. <laughs> oh, I was just goofing. It's stating that those acts were Mr. Combs' way of showing that he likes you. Look, oh, okay. He's not a third grader. He's not pulling someone's <laughs> ponytail. Well, he's pulling something else. But <laughs> his, how did so many oh. adults just put up with this? It's so funny to be like, no, no, no. That, that means he loves you. He likes you. Yeah, no, he's just you nervous. Mean, he's playing with my balls. No, yeah. that means he appreciates all the hard work you do. KK's hypocrisy is breathtaking at best or enabling at worst. Mr. Jones believes that KK aided and abetted Mr. Combs' sexual assault of him and was working oh, no. with Mr. Combs to groom him into accepting wow. a homosexual relationship. You know, it's actually not gay if you don't touch balls. <laughs> So many great artists throughout the the uh, eons here. Yeah, you know, this reminds me. I was thinking because they made they made Trans Awareness Day on Easter. Yeah, yeah. That someone was like, "Well, we're gonna get uh, government sponsored homosexuality." Lord willing. And I was like, "That'd actually be really funny if there's a future like gay police force." <laughs> that just went around forcing people to do gay shit at gunpoint. Yeah, that's San Francisco. Just forcing that's... dudes to suck each other off. I've said that about bisexuality. I think it should be a government force. <laughs> You're going to be bi. <laughs> For the whole month of Pride. Yeah, yeah. They sent out a special unit that just gets dudes to suck dicks. Anyone who claims to be bi, a government agent will come to your house and force you. Put your hands in the air. <laughs> yeah, and now put them down their <laughs> pants. <laughs> Put your hands around my anus. <laughs> All right, where was I? Uh, <laughs> right, he. That was just. <laughs> they were horsing around. Despite these assurances, on several occasions, uh, when Mister Combs began to undress and walk around his house naked, KJ would say, "Okay, I am leaving now," <laughs> and she would disappear. I mean, I guess walking around naked in your own house is a power move, but it is still very gay. But also, isn't this behavior right here? Isn't this precisely what everyone should have been doing? Okay, uh, I'm leaving now. I mean, look, if you know how to compartmentalize this properly, yes, it's absolutely what you should have done. Oh, shit. I, apparently... Now, I mean, I guess as a woman, you can't get your balls fondled. That's true. I guess... The it's safe... a different kind of violation. Yes, the safest place to be as a woman is next to a homosexual predator. Yeah, that's probably why she was fine with it. Diddy didn't want no piece of her. Uh, through these sexually deviant acts... Oh, God, having that on the record is so bad. One would say Mr. Combs has a pattern and practice of engaging... <laughs> And such nefarious activity. Damn, they really describe him worse than Jeffrey Epstein. Look, man, we're on page 12. There are, <laughs> there are 60 more pages. Oh, I got all day for this shit. This ongoing conduct shows that Mr. Combs cannot be rehabilitated. Damn, did he so gay they can't fix it? <laughs> he's, too, he's too gay to he's, be let out. He's huh? irreparably gay. Yeah, we're going to have to put him in the isolation unit. <laughs> he's he's, he's going to fuck the other prisoners. Yeah, it's going to be the Hannibal Lecter thing, but instead of the mask, it's, it's a ball a, gag. On a ball gag. Gagging a dick, a fucking ass cover. 
<laughs> Mr. Co- oh, what is it? Mr. Combs attempted She's got to a groom. chastity cage on. <laughs> Mr. Jones into engaging in... Okay. Oh, God. I got to know how you do this. I guess we're about to find out. How you groom someone into gay sex? I don't think you could do it unless the guy was gay. At least a little, right? I feel like you could <laughs> tap into something, you know, hidden deep in the crevices of the psyche. You got to be... Uh, majority gay, so at least fifty-one percent. Okay, so so this was basically destiny. They were gonna suck a dick at some point. I don't think you're getting a ten percenter to do this, but okay. I think you can get someone a fifty-one to go up to a seventy-five. I mean, I guess look with enough coke and Molly. I mean, that is that is the move. You could drug someone up enough to where they probably actually just wouldn't understand what's happening. I guess this really is just gay MK Ultra. Like you're just gay K Ultra, yeah. Yep. You're just gonna give someone enough drugs until they fucking get gay. Damn, Diddy did the research. He figured out exactly the combination and amount of drugs it takes to turn an otherwise straight man gay. Mr. Combs was aware that Mr. Jones looked up to and idolized music producer Stephen. Aaron Jordan. Oh, they got Stevie J. Oh, no. Stevie J is an American DJ, record producer, and television personality. And also gay. Stevie J. Stevie Gay. (laughs) Stevie Stevie Gay was part of the Bad Boy Records production team, the Hitmen. Well, that's also what he does. He hits men. In 1997, Stevie J won a Grammy for his work on Puff Daddy's debut album. Throughout the late 90s, Stevie J produced for several artists, including Mariah Carey, Ted Campbell, the Notorious B.I. IG, uh, Jesse, blah, 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 Jay Z. God, blah, I'm blah, blah. so happy Biggie is dead. He was one of the producers on the Love album. Mr. Combs used access to Stevie J and his knowledge of Mr. Jones' admiration oh, of no. Stevie J to groom and entice Mr. Jones to engage in homosexuality. All right, look, there's no one I want to meet enough to be gay. <laughs> Yeah, that's... I'm not going gay to meet Mark Cuban. That's what I'm saying. One one of these incidents would not make you gay. A hundred of them, however. (laughs) The evidence is stacking up. You're questionable at best. It's one thing if you're not gay and you get drugged and raped. It's another thing if you do gay shit for like three straight years. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, look, as a grown man getting coached into it, I don't have... I don't have a ton of sympathy. Take this off the screen. I gotta make... <laughs> oh, God, is it dick pics from Diddy? No, okay, it's censored. We'll show it. It is people having gay sex. Oh, uh, God, there's one. video? I mean, of course there's video. Uh, where was I? Diddy Mr. had the video. Mr. Combs went so far as to share a video of Stevie J anally penetrating a Caucasian male without a condom. Well, this escalated very quickly. Well, that's as gay as it gets. Yeah, that it? is literally the gayest thing you could do. Yeah, gay sex is really gay. Ah, don't love that. <laughs> Holy shit. Don't love that. I'm not sure why they included did the detail they did it without a condom though i don't know why. they want you to know he's hitting it raw it's suddenly they're they're concerned. that's what type of freak you're dealing with <laughs> suddenly they're concerned about public health issues well that was probably you know a dei thing oh maybe we're being too judgmental this was done to ease mr jones's oh. anxiety concerning homosexuality oh okay so it was like no look it's cool i yeah it'd be funny to be like okay but which position am i <laughs> Yeah, am I the white guy in this scenario? <laughs> Depending on what you say, I might agree. I don't want to be Caucasian male. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> uh, exactly. Blah. According to Mr. Combs, this is a normal practice in the music industry. Look, even Stevie <laughs> J is doing all of the cool kids. That, are... <laughs> all right, so that qualifies as grooming? No. I'll be like, hey, look at Stevie J blowing this white twink's back out. Yeah. He'd be like, see, no, it's cool. Look, he's having fun. All the cool producers are getting yeah, fucked like, in the ass. What are you? Are you don't want to be great like Stevie J? Uh oh. Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper. Oh no. And R and B singer. Those are men. And Stevie J. Wait, one, two, three, four, four guys. Oh, at the same time. Wow. Mr. Combs promised. Wait, to make- they ran a train on Diddy, or is that individually? Uh, no, I I don't think Diddy got fucked. I think Diddy Diddy does the fucking. Oh, okay, okay. Diddy 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 does the fucking. So Mr. <laughs> it's a nice alliteration. So Mr. Jones got the train ran on him. Oh uh, God, 
No, 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 this was he was telling Mr. Jones that he had oh. sex with all these other people to try and tempt him into it because it's not gay because a bunch of guys had gay sex. Right, right. OK, it's not gay. There's four guys fucking. No, it's, it's cool, dude. No, what are you talking? Gay. This is the straightest thing you can do. This is we're practicing for women. Yeah, bros <laughs> hanging out. What do you don't make it weird, dude? Mr. Combs promised to make sure that Mr. Jones wins producer of the year at the Grammys if he engaged in homosexuality. Damn. All right. This is he had to have been co up and on molly because that's suck my dick and you'll be producer of the year is 1000 percent coke and molly driven someone's got to go back and find out who won producer of the year during the the bad boy runs because if we know now if any that's bad boy, true if any bad boy producer uh, won that honor we know how they got it the following are screenshots of the video of stevie J anally penetrating a caucasian male that ah. mr combs provide to mr oh <laughs> look at his face <laughs> Damn, he's really into it. <laughs> well, I guess that's uh, what a great angle to shoot uh, it from. <laughs> well, I didn't even do I didn't even do the science on the angle. She is <laughs> he is standing he's standing over him. This is wow. He is right next to two guys fucking. <laughs> and let, maybe this is like a telescopic lens. Uh, but no, he's probably pretty close. Sure looks like uh, he was right right in on the action. Like yeah, a just, just come on, baby. Look at the camera. <laughs> Look at the camera. Oh, this angle is sick. I can't even tell which way the guy is. So there's a nipple, and I think that's an armpit. Uh, it's kind of so blurred out, it's hard to tell. All I know is that black dude is going hard. Uh, he's I'm clenching his teeth. I'm not sure if there's more pictures. I'm a bit. Oh yeah. All right. No rappers. Oh, Meek no. Mill. He is a Philadelphia rapper oh, who dated Nicki no. Minaj. Oh no, Meek baby. Oh cheek Phil. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Uh, he performed at the Super Bowl and has oh, successful. No. Oh, that's Usher. I told you. Oh Usher. my God. I called Usher. Hell yeah. Now wait. Hold on a second though. If I had to get fucked by a guy, I'd like it to be a guy with a famously <laughs> small penis. That's. That is, you know, 4D chess. Well, I'm just saying gun to your head. <laughs> you have no choice but to pick someone. Yeah. And they're like, there's there's a, the big dick guy. Yeah, there's Meek Mill. And then there's Acorn Dick to Usher. I'm picking Acorn Dick. Although, doesn't that imply Diddy bottomed? Uh, well, maybe. Maybe he did. There's, I hope we find out. I think he certainly tried it. I don't know if it was a regular thing. I think it's more a power thing where he wanted to do the fucking to establish. I, you know, I, I like to think so. But at the same time, you know, Diddy was different. Holy shit. This writer is in possession of the video and will provide. Wait, a there's copy. video of it. Wait, hold on. What was well, seven in relation? No, to? that's that's what this oh, is. Oh, that video. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, OK, there's. Take it off again. I just I just want to make sure the uh, the pictures don't have anything. Where I got. Wow. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, it's all okay, blurred. Good. Was he wearing a do rag? That is nasty work <laughs> to be wearing a do rag. Uh, maybe I can't tell if he has just a very hard fade. Yeah, this is well. This is why I wear all these chains. So when a guy's fucking me, they they shangle. They shangle about. Uh, People can hear me getting raped. And it's they come a distress and signal. Me. Yeah, I'm like a goat with one of those bells around its neck. I don't even know why they included this. What is what is this? Uh, probably his asshole. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually a real photo of his asshole. It's very wide and square. Well, that's after they got done with it. Yeah. He, he got fucked by a Lego. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Uh, 2022, Mr. Jones is sexually assaulted by... We're on page fourteen. This Damn. has just been. This has been like five straight pages, man, of rape. Did he really got away with a lot? You got to. It's impressive. On Thanksgiving Day, twenty twenty two, Mister Jones was in Mister Combs' house, located in Miami, Florida. Young Miami and her female cousins were also present. Mr. Combs. Look, was... Young Miami's hot. I have proof of that. Well, see, so this is this is the part I'm not getting. If Young, yeah, and her female cousins. I don't like it when guys claim they got raped by a woman. I understand it happens sometimes. Uh, if you're underage, I buy it. But yeah, if you're yeah. a grown man. Yeah, if you're 35. Look, you have the God-given abilities to prevent it. Yeah, push the person away. Yeah, from... they they have to mount you. You can, you know, they, there's a lot of obstacles to the female rape. Yeah, unless someone, like, chained you to something. There, yeah. There's, Mr. Combs was intoxicated and offered cocaine to Mr. Jones. Well, he's just being a good host. Yeah, all right. Okay, well, yeah. What do you want him to be mean? Mr. Jones rejected him and proceeded to walk into the restroom. While using the restroom, young Miami's cousin burst into the bathroom and began groping Mr. Jones. Okay, wait. Okay, this, what? This guy's complaining yeah. that a hot chick burst into the bathroom. Just started sucking him off? Oh, no, the whole 
horrors. <laughs> oh, 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 you know, icky, icky. Okay, maybe you are gay. <laughs> that's yeah, that's a good point. Hey, maybe. buddy. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs sent her in there to sexually assault Mr. J- I don't Your think. officer, your officer, this hot this hot chick, she yeah. came into the bathroom and, and, and when my pants were down, she she started sucking my dick. <laughs> Let's see what young Miami's cousin looks like. Uh young. I'm gonna guess black. Maybe. You never know. Or Puerto Rican, maybe. It's, well, that's a guy. That's not all right, not her male cousin. Ew, Google. Yeah. What a, oh, is that? Is that... No, you got to spell it like you're illiterate. I already did. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. My apologies. Uh, all right. That's all right. Yeah. Boo hoo, buddy. I declare not rape. Yeah. Come on. Dismiss That'd be funny if that's how the, yeah. that's how the, the, the judge did it. Yeah. They just brought up pictures. And he's like, hmm. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, it's like tindery swiping. Yeah. <laughs> Depending hmm. on how hot they are, this is well, rape or not rape. After reviewing the evidence, I'm going to say uh, no rape. Nope. Uh, so she bursts in, right? He, uh, As she entered the bathroom, she dropped her knees, began performing oral sex on Mr. Jones' exposed penis. God bless her. Mr. Jones, yeah, what a trooper. Yeah. Where are all these women? Didn't even wait for him to, you know, get the pee off. I've never had someone kick in my bathroom yeah, door. to suck my okay. dick. Someday, maybe. I gotta I got get Diddy money first. <laughs> Mr. Jones pushed her away and exited the bathroom. Ooh, yucky. No pussy for me, please. <laughs> Not <laughs> today. I'm here to work. Sweetheart, this is a business trip. Young Miami's cousin did not accept Mr. Jones' rejection as she proceeded to follow Mr. Jones out of the bathroom. She started undressing and attempted to straddle him and okay. have sex with him in the presence of Mr. Combs and his staff. All right, I don't love the exhibitionism. I've just, you know, it's not my thing. Yeah, that is a little weird. I would not be comfortable with you that. You know, I don't want Diddy jerking off while I'm having sex. Once again, Mr. Jones pushed her off. The following are images from a video of young Miami, her cousin, Mr. Jones, and Mr. Combs. Oh, no, that dude got his cheek split. So, all right. I mean, first of all, it's really bad for Diddy that there's video of all this shit. But well, I mean, that is the double-edged sword of having cameras throughout your house and always recording things on your phone. Yes, it's great to be the blackmailer, but it can also affect you as the blackmailer. Yeah, you still have that evidence. Ooh, that's a rough title. Trafficking and Victim ah. Protections Act. Oh, let me get a, a drink of my my. Ironically enough, gay water before we continue on. Oh, let me uh, I'll check in on the chat to see. I'm glad everyone is uh, enjoying gay ditty. All right, you know, there's just there's something fun about finding out rich and powerful people are gay. It's nice to see a guy I didn't like that much have his life ruined. Yeah, it's, you know, I can objectively enjoy this one. Especially a guy who ruined so many other lives. It's kind of, you know, it's a it's a nice it's a nice sentiment to well, watch Well, and downfall. he was he was responsible for at least Tupac being killed and probably Biggie also. Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was transported from California to New York, Florida, and the United States Virgin Islands during this time. Oh, wow. Mr. Jones was forced to solicit sex workers? Well, that's just a smart move by Diddy. Don't get your hands dirty. And to perform sex acts to the pleasure of Mr. Combs. Hey, hey, do you want to suck off Diddy? Wait. I'll give you $300 right now to go suck Diddy off. I'm confused by this. Is this meaning he was forced to have sex with the sex workers in front of Diddy, or he was forced no, to I have think sex he was, with Diddy? I, no, I think he was soliciting them for Diddy. Well, do remember, though, one of Diddy's things was the freak-offs, where he would just sit, he was a cuck, he would sit in the corner while someone else fucked his girl, and he would just be, you know, boofing drugs and beating off, I guess. Man, I gotta get better drugs. I know, I've never been that high. I've been, <laughs> I've been real fucking high. Dude, I've been I've, fucked up. I have never been that high. <laughs> I've never been high enough to just sit in the corner and be like, fucking in front of me, I'm yeah. gonna go off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the setup is so funny to be like, okay, you guys f- fuck over there. I'm yeah, gonna yeah, jerk yeah. off of the court. No, I'm too, <laughs> I'm too fucked up to participate. You guys, you guys fuck while I watch. Especially on all those drugs, your dick is just limp as hell. Like, what do you, what do you do? Well, He's just. I wonder if that's the problem. Yeah. He's doing so much coke and Molly, his dick doesn't work anymore. It's like that Drake video. He's just limp <laughs> all over the place, just wagging it about like a Dikembe Mutombo finger. <laughs> All right, Jerry. Uh, on or about February 4th, 2023, Jesus, this is not that long ago, Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to bring prostitutes and sex workers back to his home in Miami, Florida. 
This writer is in possession of the video. Oh, God. It's so funny to be like, damn, I just wanted to make beats. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think I was going to be picking up hoes. He had no idea what he was getting in for. The sex workers that Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to bring back to his home. Is that who uh, this is? Probably. On or about February 2nd, 2023, uh... Mr. Jones believes Mr. Combs drugged him. Okay, oh, now we're talking. There we go. Mr. Jones recalls waking up naked, dizzy, and confused. With a sore ass. Yeah. <laughs> he was in bed with two sex workers and Mr. Oh, Combs. fuck. Damn, that sentence started so good. Yeah, so fuck. Wrong. I was like, oh, ooh. He also recalls aimlessly wandering around the house with no clothes on. Oh, no, buddy. How is Diddy undressing all these people? Well, I mean, I guess when they're passed out. I guess that's true. I, maybe It's not that hard if someone's unconscious. Well, getting pants off a guy who's just laying. I, well, but when you do it for 20 years. Yeah, yeah you know, he, true. The man's got practice. Get your reps in. <laughs> on another occasion, Miami, Florida, on Thanksgiving night of 22. Oh, man, he had a lot to be thankful for this year. <laughs> Mr. Combs asked Mr. Jones and DeForest Taylor. Who the fuck is DeForest Taylor? Former offensive lineman in the NFL. Is it? I don't, that would have been no, my I have guess. no idea. Let's find out who DeForest Taylor it's a is. a sick name, though. Yeah, it's pretty good. He should be a wildlife advocate. <laughs> Don't cut down DeForest, player. <laughs> Only you can prevent DeForest fires. <laughs> uh, oh, what, he's light-skinned? Yeah, light-skinned actor. He okay. might as well be white. Uh, he, so they went into the studio bathroom. He asked them for a $100 bill because he wanted to do uh, them to do cocaine with him. All right, well, that's cool, though. Uh, again, just a good host. A man who takes the time to be like, no. We only snort, snort cocaine off hundreds, okay? We're high class. I'm kind of surprised he didn't, uh, he strikes me more as a gold coke straw kind of fella. <laughs> you maybe forgot it. I guess. Uh, he asked the driver, right? Mr. Jones was scared, but luckily he didn't have a hundred dollar bill. Oh, no cocaine for me. <laughs> I, I don't have any cash. So Mr. Combs waited a little later to do coke with a young Miami. You know, it is good to know that at least rich and famous people are still doing coke on the rag. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. normies have lost out on it because it's all tainted with, you know, fentanyl. Right. Well, you got to be a billionaire yeah. to not get coke with fentanyl. That's in what it. I'm That's... saying. At least the rich are still enjoying what used to be a beautiful recreational drug, if we're all being honest. 70s and 80s, coke was cool and, you know, kind of safe. And plentiful. Yeah, plentiful. You have to worry about dying. Crack ruined it a little. Yeah, well, coke was also very expensive in the 70s, though. It's that's what I'm saying. It's cheaper now. Yeah, but that's because it kills you. Yeah, well, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> as they say. Later that evening, he required Mr. Jones to solicit sex workers from Booby Trap on the river. Oh, located. wow, we have the exact address? Yeah, a party after the show. Can you look up their phone number? <laughs> Do you want it? If we can find it. Booby trap on the river. I'll have uh, one sex worker, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm Diddy's assistant. Uh, not the gay one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the one you <laughs> fucked, but wow, it's over 24 hours. Why does it look like a Chuck E. Cheese? Isn't that the... Where isn't that the place... A kid. <laughs> isn't that from Breaking Bad? Uh... You know, you're right. It does kind of look like... Or is that just what all those era of strip clubs look like? I'm sure there's uh, there's plenty of those floating about the country. I like that they just give their full address in this. Jesus, Mr. Jones did so. Mr. Combs forced him to engage in unsolicited sex acts with these workers. Diddy has killed our video. Well, uh, it'll be... Well, it's not important to see us. You see the, the documents. Yeah, not important. No, oh, I didn't even have to look it up. They deliver pussy? Wow, what a what a country. No wonder <laughs> they were doing so well. Booby trap on the river. As part of Mr. Jones' sex worker recruitment tools. Okay, it's not let's not describe it like this. It's not a tool. You just called somewhere and was like, hey, I'll give you yeah. a bunch of money if you come fuck Diddy. Yeah, what do you mean? You Googled strip clubs <laughs> yeah, and were like, yeah. hey, do any of your strippers have sex with clients? Yeah, this this was not like a mastermind required to put this together. This yeah, is a pretty simple plot. You were basically the pussy assistant. <laughs> That's going to be a new show for TNT. <laughs> Mr. Combs provided Mr. Jones with an exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required him to wear it to booby trap on the river as a signal to any sex worker wow. who approached that Mr. Combs was in town and sent Mr. Jones to recruit him. Man, that's All a right. pretty good move. That is pretty funny to be like, no, wear the merch so they know who you're with. Well, that means they're all aware that if a guy shows up with that merch, it means they can get paid to fuck Diddy. That made his job easier. It makes, you know, I've heard about with uh, like Coke dealers before. Sometimes they'll agree to meet in a place and one will just be wearing like a football jersey and the number will be Christ of the Brick. So it's creative. Yeah. It's kind of a similar situation. 
Mr. Jones had no desire to visit Booby Trap. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't even want to go to the strip club. This guy really hates naked women. Yeah, boy, he's not making a good case for being straight. Mr. Jones had no desire to solicit oh. sex workers. I didn't want to do that at all. Mr. Combs used his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones into soliciting sex workers. Why do they keep saying the full name of the establishment? I I don't know. It's, I assume the lawyers thought it was funny. Look, booby Trap on the River. Booby Trap on the River. River, booby trap it on is the river. a funny name. Don't get me wrong. As detailed below, Mr. Combs used many tactics to maintain dominion and control of Mr. Jones. All right, look, but once again, dude, you're a man. You can just stop going to work. Unless we're going to get to a part where it's eventually like Diddy said he was going to kill me if I didn't do this. Maybe. Yeah, so this is ridiculous. Apparently, these workers were accustomed to servicing Mr. Combs and would know. Yeah, okay, we already yeah, talked servicing. about servicing. We were right. <laughs> Service with a smile. Damn, are those the broads? He was good at his job. Look, when you're a billionaire, they let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> they let you. Uh, those might be the truest words Donald Trump ever spoke. I'm hating this Mr. Jones guy more and more as we scroll <laughs> down. And it's just nothing but hot chicks. He's like, I can't believe he made me have sex with yeah, all these Yeah, to be women. honest, it just sounds like Diddy trusted the wrong person. The following are Instagram profiles of two of the sex workers. That Can Mr. I get Combs... their ad? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what are they? <laughs> they required Mr. Jones to solicit and have sex with them at his home in Miami, Florida. Well, he certainly has got a type. I mean, look. Diddy might have done gay stuff, but his taste in women was impeccable. Mr. Jones had no desire to solicit. Yeah, you already said that. And have uh, or or have sex with the individual. Boy, he really wanted paragraph. to make sure that was on the record. Maybe this guy's like asexual or something. I want it back on uh, for the <laughs> just for the record again. I had no gay sex with Diddy. The following is the phone number of another sex worker that Mr. Combs Ooh. required. You might have to pull this down. I think this would count as a doxing on old YouTube. Oh no, they blurred it out. We're good. We're good. Mr. Jones had no desire. How many times are they going to say this? That's, <laughs> as many times as he probably implicates himself in a crime. Mr. Combs used his power to intimidate and force him into soliciting and sleeping with the individual. I, can a guy really yell at you until your dick gets hard? That's that a, yeah. Mean, okay. So you had to fuck two hot chicks? I also, I feel like I wouldn't perform well under those circumstances. If, if, well, maybe the tension, you know. Well, if P did, he was standing in the corner beating off uh, and yelling yeah. at me. I feel like uh, maybe maybe eventually get used to it. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's like uh, performing in the finals. Some, <laughs> you know, some people are Michael Jordan. Just pretend Diddy's not there. <laughs> and some people are uh, LeBron when he scored seven or whatever. Mr. Combs used many tactics to maintain dominion and control of Mr. Jones. He promised him a Grammy for producer of the year for the Love Album. Well, that didn't happen. He offered him two hundred and fifty thousand to purchase all the instruments he wanted. That's pretty good. That's a lot of money. He promised him ownership of his $20 what? million dollar property, One Star Island, Miami, Florida. Damn, now I blame this dude for not keeping his mouth shut. Is it too late for Diddy to touch my penis? <laughs> yeah. Because for $20 million. Does he need a new assistant? He can he can touch and grope as much as he likes. No <laughs> penetration. We'd have to negotiate that price. <laughs> Uh, he promised access to record label executives like Lucian Grange, oh man, and Ethiopia Habdamarium. Is that a fake name? Yeah, that's some bullshit. That's not a real person. What, like, what born-again Muslim came up with that name? I've heard of Lucy Grange, though. Mr. Combs would often switch up his Damn, approach. Diddy had multiple bags when it came to getting people to do gay things. Well, you gotta keep it fresh. He would go from promising Mr. Jones the world to threatening Mr. Jones with physical harm. Well, that's a classic. You're gonna beat too. the fuck out of your ass if you don't let me fuck your ass. I'm gonna beat or fuck your ass. One of the <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones. Jones' face. Oh, Jesus. I'm glad face was the word after that. I did. Uh, listen, here, come here and I'm going to eat your ass. I'm going to eat your fucking ass. Threatening a guy with a blowjob or eating his ass. I'm going to suck your fucking dick. And okay. You keep talking shit like that. I'm going to come over here and suck your fucking dick and then I'm going to eat your ass. Uh, then we'll see you who's guys. boss. Yeah, we'll see who's laughing when my nose is in your ass. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones's face and informed Mr. Jones that he is willing to kill his mother. I'm going to kill your mother if you don't no, no, suck no. my... Diddy's going to kill his own mother. Oh, his own mother. Janice Combs, if he must, in order to get what he wants. So he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones. Okay, so... Why would killing his own mother... Yeah, yeah, that doesn't... I guess... I don't understand the threat there. Uh, he's proving his point. He would kill his own mother to eat that guy's ass. 
He's really, he's really devoted. I mean, that is, don't get me wrong. That is, I mean, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, that's a hell of a proposition. Mr. Combs, J. Combs, solicits uh, drugs and engages in illicit sex acts with, ah, geez, minors and sex Ah, murders. see, this is, this is the problematic part for me personally. Yes, the child rape is significantly less humorous. I can <laughs> overlook a lot, you know, I can get, I'm progressive. God damn, this is all so fucking recent. July 2nd, 2023 in California, Mr. Combs had a listening party at his own. Oh, I, uh, I you know when they have to put it in quotes, that's not good. Yeah, I do want to say, friend of the show, Cody Nichols did uh, text me the other day. I guess he all the choppers flew over where he lives now to get to uh, Diddy's house the other day. Ah, uh, they they did they take his gay sex. Yeah, <laughs> present at the party was an R and B artist. Nine. That's Usher. Okay, hold on. I want to scroll down though and see if they they give it away. He is a Grammy award winning R and B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bajan billionaire. All right, that's so specific. Is that Chris Brown. No, was it? Uh, assaulting Bajan Billionaire. Oh, I'm going to no. guess a lot of people have Googled this. Uh, who the fuck is it? Uh, come on. Who assaulted a Bajan Billionaire? Let's... Yeah, it does seem silly at this point to include that uh, much of a detail and not just name That's the so specific. Someone has to know who this is. I'm just guessing. Who assaulted Rihanna? Wait, who was else at a Bajan? Uh, is Bajan Jamaican? Has suggested, oh, wow, Rihanna. Interesting. Is that where Bajan is? I have no fucking idea. She is, she was married to like some sort of Saudi Arabian guy for a while. So. Well, that just makes me like Rihanna more that she's beating people up. Okay. Oh, but she was just present at the party. That's way different. It's unfortunate to make it into the record just for being there. Yeah, yeah. That seems like a bummer. Why do I have to be associated with the underage sex party just because I, <laughs> you know, stop by? Sex workers, right. They were there with some sex workers and underage girls. The event began at 7 p.m. Oh, that seems like an early affair. Mr. Combs. Well, they had bedtimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but losing everybody. The girls have a curfew. So we're going to get straight to the train. <laughs> we're all aboard the Diddy uh, train. They got to go to bed by 10 on weeknights. <laughs> Everyone, put your asshole out. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Combs requested female sex workers and required Mr. Jones to solicit them. An hour later, several sex workers appeared. Well, this guy seems really fucking good at getting sex workers to show up. He, he's I'll never be, failed. Yeah, I'll be honest. He's good at his job. In addition to sex workers, there were at least five women in the crowd that were under the age of 16. Well, who recruited them? Jesus. Mr. Combs forced all the women to drink lace de, de Leon liquor. Also, how far under the age of 16? Yeah, that is, you know, nine is way different than 15. Neither well, so, is yeah. good, but very It's different. all bad, but I need to know there's different predators. Yeah, it's a different type of predator yeah. to go after, you know, the different age brackets. Also, if you bring legitimate children to Diddy, I got a problem with Jesus. the dude who got the children. He laced the liquor with ecstasy. Well, that, I could go for some of that. I really could. That sounds like a good I time. don't know about being molested, but a little liquor laced with some good ecstasy? Every, Sign me up for that. If you could just remove... The fondling and raping from yeah. all this. It does sound like a, a fun party. Hey, look, did he want to party? Yeah, you gotta tell him no. <laughs> you gotta tell him no. Mr. Combs did not check the ID of any of these girls. Wow, all right, well, I can't believe it. Yeah, the dude on Coke and Molly didn't check for ID. Okay, look. Yeah, he didn't have a fucking black light scanner yeah. on his phone. All right, I'm not going to put that one on Diddy. The presence of these underage women made Mr. Jones very uncomfortable. I love that he keeps saying how uncomfortable he was. I know. But he continuously appears at all these places. For the record, Your Honor. I was very uncomfortable at this party. <laughs> yeah, so... Okay, sure. I ate some Molly, so I was actually vibing pretty hard. But I went on the record, I still didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, it's... It's ridiculous that you can't, <laughs> you can't show up to 20 of these and use the same excuse. Like, yeah, sure, I went, I got the sex workers, but I was uncomfortable. Yeah, but I... Okay, I had sex with the underage girls, but I didn't like it. But I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. I was shaking my head the whole time. Yeah, I know. So it shows up on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Just a guy shaking his head. Oh, no, I don't enjoy this one bit. <laughs> uh, he attempted to leave, and Mr. Combs forced him to stay. Oh, Ooh. wow. Mr. Combs went so far as to take Mr. Jones's car keys to prevent him from leaving. Well, how drunk was he? Maybe yeah. Mr. Combs was just being a good host. Yeah, after being forced to drink lace Deleon? I've never heard of this shot. Uh, Mr. Google it. I want to know what black drink this is. Yeah, I, this is... Uh, is that know, like... Is it like... For me to not have heard of a liquor... It's a, a new tequila. level of luxury in tequila. Of course it is. 
I mean, I'm sure this is probably... Oh, does Diddy own this tequila? Yeah, I was about to say. It's got to be one of his brands. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, I wonder if all the bottles come mixed with ecstasy. That'd make... Oh, that'd be a sick version of booze. So he took all these lace shots. Mr. Jones began feeling lightheaded and recalls passing out and waking up at 4 a.m. The following morning, naked, with a sex worker sleeping It's never good to wake up naked oh, Jesus. And, and not know how. Screenshots of a video Damn. from that night. Or I bet it below. Man, this is why this generation is not going to be able to get away with any crimes. Jesus, just caught, caught in 4K. They'd be they taking say. videos of everything. Okay, well, he doesn't seem to be hating it here. Yeah, okay, buddy. Yeah, I was disgusted. Really? Yeah, he may have been thinking it. He certainly, certainly wasn't acting it. I'm sure in hindsight you weren't comfortable. Oh, wait, that's Diddy. Mr. Oh, Combs. that's Diddy. My apologies. Damn, this, this snitch just had his phone out taking pictures? This is why you can't let people with a camera in your party. Ah. They're going to get you. Who's that? I, was, I, I, I thought that was Wiz Khalifa. I can't, does it just say? Justin oh. Combs with an underage female. Okay, why didn't you blur out her face? That's kind of No one great. can tell. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Oh, wait, I want to make sure. Oh, not Cuba. <laughs> oh, Cuba. I know you did this shit. You know what? My, my intention coming into this episode is I figured I'd just read the headlines and we'd skip around to the ones that are good. But all of them have just been they're all so they're far. all so good. I need to keep going through them. Yeah, because we started there. There was the one with the studio shooting, which who gives a fuck? Yeah, but... we're doing a special extended show tonight. This is Cuba Gooding Jr. <laughs> How much battery do I have left on the laptop? We might have to swap. No, I got 60. We're good. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs was grooming him to pass him off to his friends. Damn. Damn. Ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. And I was about to say, it is kind of incredible that rich dudes like to share, you know, their victims i think they get off on just having the power to be like hey you go fuck him do you think it's like a status thing that they like brag about when they have brunch with them they're like so yeah. how'd you enjoy yeah, tommy yeah, yeah. well I, it is it's like blackmail. loaning out a cool car or something <laughs> yeah giving someone your nice watch to wear for the yeah. wedding or something. it's funny you know you think they'd be greedy as child predators but no they're actually very willing to share I think my Cuba Gooding Jr. boat theory is getting a bit better. This fear became reality when Mr. Combs introduced Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. while they were on Mr. Combs' yacht. So do you like uh, fucking people that are passed out cold? <laughs> Did you like boat trip? <laughs> <laughs> During the introduction, Mr. Combs suggested that Cuba get to know Mr. Jones better. Well, that's not good. That means gay sex. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> I know what you mean when you put something in quotes. Yeah. He then left them alone in a makeshift studio on a yacht. Okay, studio. Look, just because they, you know, soundproof it so you yeah. can't hear the screams, <laughs> that doesn't make it a studio. Well, really, anywhere a laptop is is a studio these <laughs> yeah. days. That's uh, Mr. Combs and Cooper Gooding Jr. moments before Mr. Jones is assaulted. Oh, no. Seconds before disaster. They're always so nicely dressed, too. It feels worse to get raped by a guy in a suit. I don't know why, but it feels like... Uh, it's a status thing, I suppose. It's like professional rape. <laughs> it's yeah. like a buttoned up. I'm more a casual rape kind of guy, I guess. Yeah, you know, jogging clothes, something like that. But preferably, if I ever get assaulted, I hope the guy's in sweatpants and a wife beater. Yeah, make this easy. As evidenced by a video of which screenshots are embedded below. Man, they really got this guy. Kuba Gooding Jr. began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones's legs. Damn. His upper inner thighs near his groin. The small of his uh, near Cuba his butt, near his buttocks and his shoulder. Cuba. Well, I got to say, of all the people who've appeared at this, this is the least surprising. <laughs> I always knew he was up to no good. I'm telling everyone, go watch Boat Trip, and you'll see what I'm talking about. The you know, I guess part of the real mess lesson here is all performers are kind of fruity. Every single, it's necessity for yeah. these people, I guess. Yeah, like I guess it shouldn't be shocking that all the gay black men happen to be actors and rappers. I, I think also part of it is sometimes these guys just like max out. They they, they fuck so much pussy, it, they switch to pussy. It really is exactly people that. People thought that was a joke. No, that man is a philosopher. He was he a prophet. Under, he understands, you know, this is a real problem. He knew what was going on. You're crushing on so much yacht. pussy, you go, how do I get to what's better? Mr. I gotta see who's this Mr. Jones fella. Maybe he's just fucking he's just really attractive. Hot. 
I got a Greek god. Mr. Jones was extremely uncomfortable. That seems to be a reoccurring theme. And proceeded to lean away from Mr. Gooding Jr. He rejected his advances. No, Cuba, no. <laughs> no, please, no. <laughs> don't, and, don't, don't, don't molest me while doing radio. I no. was just about to say, getting, getting raped by radio is... <laughs> <laughs> he, he drugged him and then he put him in his shopping cart and pushed him into the studio. Oh no. <laughs> he got raped by it. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Mr. Jones was extreme right, right, right. He got raped by radio. Uh Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away. The following is a screenshot of the encounter with Cuba uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. Oh gee. Okay. Oh no. This fat fuck is the one they they can't stop Damn. Him. How good is his butthole? That's Right? Something's not adding up here. Hold on a second. Yeah, is he lying? He's not telling them the whole truth. Because, <laughs> look, if he was hot, you know, if this is Justin Bieber. But, yeah, morbidly obese guy. I can kind of get it, but Diddy can fuck anything. Yeah, there's, this doesn't make no sense. What a mystery. The love album. Okay, yeah, finally, it really was the gay love album. Finally, we might be skipping a segment here. I think this is just about... Yeah, I don't uh, care about how he fucked you in business. That's yeah, just yeah, a good this, business, this man. Matter. I don't care about murders or uh, albums. I just... Oh, so many pictures. Uh, Mr. Jones... Uh, Mr. This, Jones. this really should terrify anyone. The second they want your phone, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah. If they, if they get your phone, you're, you're done So, Okay, that's just him getting threatened. Um, yes, Complex Magazine, <laughs> known journalistic source of, of expertise. Uh, oh, I forgot the, that he was with uh, J-Lo at a certain point. I saw some people saying he killed Aaliyah. It, he's been uh, accused of a lot of murders lately, which you know seems to fit his M.O. Here. You know, being a killer is kind of cool. His H-O-M-O. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was the health insurance yeah, he gave yeah. everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the Diddy brand insurance and we, HOMO. We strictly cover gay sex. Not only butt related injuries. <laughs> if you blow out your anus, Diddy's got you covered. He'll all, buy you a new anus. All <laughs> the enemas are free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get you tuned up right like an oil change. He's not paying for butt lifts. He's just paying come for in, anus replacements. Just sit down and it spreads your cheeks yeah. like the oil changers. <laughs> yeah, 15 minutes or less. <laughs> Jiffy Lube. <laughs> That's what he uses on him. Oh, their name is already gay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> defendants, Ethiopia, Happy <laughs> Dashery. Go to a Jiffy Lube. Lube. <laughs> Can you guys tune and up? Just spread your asshole. Tune up my asshole. Stand on the thing that picks the cars up and just spread, do the splits. <laughs> like spread across the whole pit. Can you shut up with my ass? <laughs> I got a party at Diddy's later. I need my ass lubed. I'm going to a pre lubed asshole. It's like a pre rolled joint. It's, you know, it's very effective. <laughs> That's how they pre game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just a poor Mexican guy with Jimmy Lou. Do you want premium? How many miles you got on this thing? When's the last time you changed this out? Uh, it's fuck. Okay. Uh, he, oh, aided. I thought he had AIDS. No, he aided something. Uh, that then profited off of Sean Combs' Rico Enterprise, right? I don't care about this either. I get it. Um, yeah, more gay sex and drugging. It is no secret that Mr. Combs had specific bottles of alcohol designated for females and other right. bottles designated for his staff. That is not a good sign. If that you is, go to a party yeah. and one bottle's for someone and the rest is for other, do not. That's a bad time. That is kind of a diabolical thing to do because, when you have designated rape bottles. Because, yeah, the only reason they're doing it is to spike it with <laughs> date rape drugs. Uh, on YouTube channel, The Art of Dialogue, former bodyguard Gene Deal exposed Mr. Combs' pill mixing method used to spike cranberry juice and orange juice. All right, when you have a patented rape cocktail. <laughs> yeah, Diddy's preferential rape blend. Uh, I'll have one, Diddy. <laughs> according to, to Mr. Deal, Mr. Combs would place ecstasy and other date rape drugs in the juices. Uh, you know, here's the thing. I've also taken a lot of ecstasy. Me too. It's never made me susceptible to being raped. We've taken a lot of ecstasy together. Never had nope. sex. Nope. Never no, once. Not yet. Maybe maybe if I relapse. <laughs> maybe if we get rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, I don't have enough money to be gay yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gay, it, a gay is a rich man's thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm working on it. Uh, I'm I, not in that tax bracket no, yet. No, no, no. I'm too poor to be gay. <laughs> uh, defendant Christina Quorum is the Ghislaine Maxwell to Sean Gomes. Oh, Jeffrey no. Epstein. 
According to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months he lived and traveled with Mr. Combs, he witnessed Mr. Combs display and distribute guns from his bedroom closet in Miami, Florida, and Los Angeles, California to questionable individuals dressed all in black. Okay, I know what they were dressed in, but what color were they? <laughs> yeah, that, I thought that's huh? where they were Wait, going. Wait, was that the picture of her? Where? On the left? That? I wouldn't trust a lady that looks like that. Jesus. What the fuck? Yeah, she looks like a ghoul. Yeah, no, that ain't... That ain't... Right. It's like a Picasso painting. It's like odd. <laughs> Her face is and, yeah. malformed. She's got a cubist head. According to Mr. Jones, right, right, right. Uh, right. Black guys getting guns. According to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months he lived and traveled with Mr. Combs, he witnessed Defendant Corm openly order her assistants to keep Mr. Combs high <laughs> off gummies and pills. All okay, right. that's pretty fucking cool. What a good assistant. Yeah. Excuse me, can I hire this lady? Just someone constantly uh, measuring your serum <laughs> concentration, be like, Jimmy needs more more Adderall for Mr. Combs. Put it in his ass. It's his 1230 yeah. Molly appointment. It's 1230 suppository. Diddy, don't forget to take your medicine. Defendant Corum <laughs> required all employees from the butler, the chef, to the housekeepers to walk around yeah. with a pouch or fanny pack filled with cocaine, GHB, ecstasy, <laughs> marijuana gummies, 100 to 250 milligrams each. Damn. And Tusi, a pink drug that is a combination of ecstasy and cocaine. All right. You know what? Diddy's pretty fucking cool for this. Diddy's pretty fucking awesome. And if you're that lit constantly, just because a guy did one horrible thing, it doesn't mean that everything he did was bad. This is a great call. <laughs> yeah. Never, never, he needed drugs so bad. <laughs> He couldn't have one assistant not have it. He didn't want to walk all the way to a, a kitchen. He's got a, every butler, the maid. How many people were just like, well, I you mean, know, it's a job. <laughs> what, what do you do? I got to just uh, wa walk around the house and feed Diddy pills. Yeah, and Tusi. Oh, we get a whole section on Tusi here. It was important to defend a quorum to have Mr. Combs' drug of choice immediately ready. Okay, hold on. I think just two C's are relatively new, new on the scene there. Yeah. And I was thinking about this earlier. There's a good chance that Diddy two seed his brain away <laughs> and all this shit. Notice how all the dates are within like the last two years. I don't think that's a coincidence. I mean, look, if you're that into, you know, prostitutes and coke. You're going to start doing some weird shit. And you're rich enough. Once again, if you're rich enough, you can get some really weird hobbies. Yeah. Well, certain drugs lead to certain decisions and and a combination of cocaine with you know, weird downers and stuff. Yeah. You're you're tranquilized enough to make <laughs> dumb decisions, but you're up enough to carry them out. Do you think he can bleed insanity? <laughs> I was too high for too long. I couldn't, I, I'm not to be held responsible for this. Your Honor, haven't you ever done Molly and yeah. actually started a sex ring? Hey, if the Twinkie defense worked <laughs> back in the day, I, I, the Tusi defense. I mean, look, this makes Diddy's biopic way cooler. Now it's just Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be fantastic. Did you see 50 Cent already said he's coming out with the... the excellent. Life? Yeah. Excellent. It's going to be called Diddy Do It. <laughs> Good old 50 Cent. 50 Cent is another guy who's been ringing this bell for like 20 years. Yeah, because Diddy, 50 got asked to party and Diddy, and 50 said no. Yeah. All right. Defend a quorum ordered uh, sex workers and prostitutes for Mr. Cole. Also <laughs> ordered and distributed. Ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms for Mr. Combs and his celebrity guests who were present on his rented yacht. I mean, look, once again, these sound like sick parties. I feel like I would have freaked the fuck out if I was too high and I looked out and there was nothing but <laughs> water everywhere. Yeah, oh, I've never gotten the wanting to party on a yacht. No, I only do drugs on solid ground. I'm terrified of getting on boats. I accidentally floated the idea of doing live shows on a cruise to Alex. That'd be hilarious. And he was yeah. immediately like, I got someone who reached out to me about that and I was like, ah, oh, fuck, we're going on a cruise. Hey, we're we're going to end up with a lawsuit for you guys. It's going to be you and Alex. I hope it's this cool. Defendant steel gave everyone the <laughs> HB and ketamine. I'll be producer four. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone on the staff was ordered to keep drugs in a fanny pack. Oh, God. That's the coolest part of this so far. Yeah, that's a great move. Forcing I'm... every person who works for you to keep a fanny pack of drugs <laughs> so you can be high 24-7 is beautiful. The man's about his business. On multiple occasions, Defendant Quorum forced Mr. Jones to carry Mr. Combs' drug pouch against his will. As the chief of staff, Defendant Quorum was instrumental in organizing and executing the RICO Enterprise. Defendant Quorum had the following individuals execute the following tasks for the RICO Enterprise. Stevie J. Recruit sex workers, 
<laughs> and, right. and attends and participates in freak offs. <laughs> Calling them freak offs is, is so funny. What's the note for that? Oh, uh, fuck. We have a video of Mr. Combs God, DJ and plaintiff, uh, plaintiff Jones at a strip club. Mr. Combs is recording the video while coaching and training Plaintiff Jones ah. how to recruit sex workers. God, the evidence in this is just damning. So Justin Combs, that's his son, solicits prostitutes, underage girls, oh, man, and sex workers would engage in free cause. Well, I guess he had his younger son solicit the younger girls like from a logistics perspective yeah they'd have sense. access you know it looks less weird i mean it's not great but it looks you know less weird for justin combs hitting up the high school sophomores and be like you want to go party with diddy yeah you want to be on a yacht look at this guy though <laughs> just the mule <laughs> oh he was just an ass to put drugs in <laughs> He acquires and distributes Mr. Combs' drugs and guns. No, his ass is only for drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... No one f fuck his ass. We need to. It's too <laughs> precious. It's our greatest. It's our greatest instrument. It's the ass that lays the golden pill. That's one way to get out of being fucked. Yeah, you got a fucking AK forty seven shoved in your ass. <laughs> Uh, he tried to fuck his ass in a green, like a red light shot out is, of the back of it. I'm just going to say it. This is way better than Epstein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is way cool. It's hip-hop's Epstein. <laughs> uh, there he is. Wow. Oh, God. I wonder what he's got in his ass in this picture. <laughs> uh, Where's his fanny pack? Cranky said it's in his ass. <laughs> Everything goes in that. He is actually wearing a bag in this picture, if you'll notice. So, Frankie Santella works alongside Brendan. Wow, he's the assistant to the mule. <laughs> What a, what a prestigious position. I'm not good oh. enough to put drugs in my ass, but I help the guy who does. But I, I'm next in line. You know, they say if I work hard for another few years, I'll make a partner. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brendan acquires and distributes Mr. Combs' drugs and guns. Frankie carries the money and pays for the guns and drugs. Okay, that's a smart system. You never want to have your guns and drugs together. You keep them separate <laughs> so you can't get charged with distribution. Yeah, I mean, look, they, they took some precautions. Yeah. It's you know, it's the copious amounts of video I have question about. The fuck is this name? Moy Bon? Moy Bon? Hires sex workers, attends and participates in freak offs. Oh, yes. I get a ditty of me. That's the number of prostitutes. <laughs> yes, a Moy Bon. I get a pussy for ditty. It's like a United Nations rape. It's just everyone. This oh. is the Japanese delegation. Yeah, with yeah, well, the Japanese delegate, please. Oh, yes, sex when did he come to Tokyo? I get a hookah for him. <laughs> oh, there, that's Moy Bon? Wait, which one of these is? is yeah, that? I need them to be specific. Is it that guy? There, Yeah, there's five people in this picture. I don't know. All right, a black is guy named Moy Bon. That's a ridiculous name. Mr. Combs funded and used his affiliation with local gangs and gang leaders who would uh, frequent his homes in LA and Miami to scare the drugs and guns he obtained and distributed out of his homes. And okay, that's where this all went wrong. You can't be selling guns out of your home. You're this, is what, get... this is what uh, BMF did. Yeah, you're going to get got. They goofed. They had the coke and guns at their at their mansion. You can't do that. Always keep them separated. Yeah, this is why you buy property. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of violence, threatening to eat plaintiff's face, displaying and distributed guns in plaintiff's presence, bragging about having law enforcement under control, bragging about murdering people, bragging Damn. about bribing witnesses and jurors in the criminal case concerning the 1999 New York City nightclub shooting with Shine. Oh, not Shine, oh, too. Oh, man. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of isolation from the music industry, <laughs> parading powerful music industry executives such as defendants Lucian Grange, Ethiopia to haberdashery as at his parties filled with sex workers, minors, and illegal drugs, such as, they really <laughs> like this list, ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. I mean, the drug charges alone are enough to put you away for life. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm surprised they haven't said what quantity of drugs he has. I think a lot is just implied. That does seem like a safe <laughs> it's assumption. It's so much they can't actually put a number on it. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of non-payment for work completed, fake promises of cash payments, $250,000, not too shabby. That's pretty good. Do you need the charger for that? I... Uh, uh, what is it? I it says I'm at forty nine percent. Are you going right. on your laptop? Yeah, tell me at twenty five, and we'll switch if we need to. Okay. Uh, Grammy Awards, right? Uh, producer of the year, Grammy Awards, and guaranteed access to future projects, and a twenty million dollar home on Star Island in Miami. Look, that's a good property in terms. In terms of the offers someone would have to make to get me interested in this process, yeah. 
that's a hell of a deal. I feel bad for like, you know, the underage girls and yeah, yeah, and the sex workers. Cool. But this dude is just getting offered a twenty million dollar piece of property to do drugs and fuck with Diddy. Yeah, can you imagine what other job are you gonna have where the guy's like, go suck his dick and yeah. give him a mansion? Do you have my fanny pack full of <laughs> Coke and Molly? Well, uh, Mr. it's two o'clock. <laughs> this what Mr. Combs is allowed to wreak havoc. Nice. As if what he was doing before was not that. <laughs> well, yeah, the previous 30 pages was a very... Well, now he gets out of hand. Yeah, now, now this is ridiculous. This is where we draw the line. While living and traveling with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones discovered that Mr. Combs has hidden cameras in every room of his home. So, uh, see, that's where, you know, Kanye calling him a fed does become interesting. It does seem like a lot of people who were deemed crazy prior to this yeah. said a lot of very accurate shit. Well, I also assume if you already have this set up and the government finds out yeah. they're probably gonna go hey you give us access to yeah, your cameras yeah. you go ahead and fuck all you want diddy uh all right he believes he had yeah he had all the people music label executives politicians and athletes on camera upon information you in can't wait until we find out you who i guarantee that that crazy bitch has a fucking black book with all the names that's gonna be a fantastic list yeah upon information belief these individuals were recorded without their knowledge and consent and as is the case with the homosexual sex tape of stevie <laughs> J. And Mr. Combs provided to Mr. Jones. Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage oh, of fuck. every person that has attended his freak off parties and his house parties. I mean, I guess if you think about it, <clears throat> this is kind of the Epstein thing where it's like, well, even if I didn't have sex with those girls, yeah, I was there. It, being on camera at the rape party is a bad look. Yeah, regardless, like at minimum, they know you ate Coke and Molly and some GHB. Yeah. Did you drink one of Diddy's drinks? Think, yeah. Did you have the, the deuce air? Do not drink one of Diddy's drinks. <laughs> uh, upon, where, uh, upon information belief, due to this treasure trove of evidence he has in his possession, Mr. Ugh. Combs believes that he is above the law and untouchable. You know how bad it is to describe it as a treasure trove of evidence? Yeah, it's a lot of videos. It's this sounds a like a dragon hard hoarding fucking child porn. Also, just to pause <laughs> for a second, think about, yeah, <laughs> just hoarding a, a bunch of hard drives. The hobbits can never stop me. I have Gandalf <laughs> having gay sex. Having this amount of cameras... <laughs> recording 24 7 the amount of footage well is i mean Ep insane. epstein had uh like three mansions that were just server rooms i mean that has to be like yeah thousands and thousands yeah. of terabytes you need a whole property just to, to store all which is probably actually why they raided all three oh, jesus you got a mexican it guy uh, upon see, information see, belief see, 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 see. i i record all these sex parties well, you do just want a guy who doesn't scroll speak through. english yeah. <laughs> do you have you can you find the part where where Usher was in here having sex with Justin Bieber. See, see, see Mr. Combs, I find the Justin Bieber, he, he blow the Usher. <laughs> I like the idea that he doesn't know who Usher is. He thinks he's a movie yeah, Usher. See, see, he blow the Usher here. You see, I, I give you the vial. This writer has spoken to several former employees of Mr. Combs who confirmed that Jose Cruz is the gatekeeper to all of Mr. Com Mr. Combs. What an embarrassing <laughs> typo. Uh, they paid someone thousands an hour to do that. Throw out the lawsuit to it's no good anymore. That'd be so fun. Yeah. The legal system <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. works. <laughs> yeah. uh, you got a typo on page 34. We're going to toss the case. We don't know who this Mr. Combs is. <laughs> Mr. Dot Com. That's so funny to be like, no, yeah. Your Honor, actually, Mr. Combs is the correct name they <laughs> yeah. meant to use the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, this is all a big misunderstanding. <laughs> Mr. Just... Combs is in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I will do anything to help you catch this Mr. Combs. He's the owner. <laughs> He's the owner of the dot com fortune. He owns the internet. He owns all the internet. Upon information, believe Jose Cruz intentionally hides behind the ah. camera and from social media and the internet due to all of the incriminating acts he was required to record right. for Mr. Combs. Well, well, that's, that's just the a right move. Yeah, that's just a good fucking IT guy. All right, maybe this Mexican knew what he was doing. If you're going to be forced to commit a bunch of crimes, yes, don't do them on camera. Yeah, well, I like having my tech person not exist on the internet. This guy's the only one who's not a fucking retard so far. <laughs> Everyone else was on the camera all the time. You think this IT guy was? was like, this guy's running a sloppy operation, but you know, it's not my place to chime in. Well, I guess when you're that drunk and high, you get uh, loose <laughs> with your... What is this? Oh, one? no. Conduct and participate in RICO Enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity, yeah. violation of racketeer influenced and corrupt organization act codified. Ooh. That's it a... is, it's always so bad when they hit you with a RICO charge. Oh, shit. Universal Music Group included in this. 
I mean, there had to have been label executives who knew this. I mean, this is an Epstein thing where it's like, you guys, they had, you know, dudes with fanny packs giving him coke <laughs> yeah. all day and you didn't have a, an inkling. Let's uh, at minimum, you'd have been like, hey, I think Puffy has a drug problem. Certainly something was going on. Yeah. I'm going to skip through this. It just looks. Yeah. They're just saying that all these people failed like they under, they knew and failed to warn the people uh, that something was, was going on. <laughs> they, they didn't warn them about Diddy. Yeah. Defendants have unlawfully increased their profits by luring and deceiving producers, musicians, writers, creators, and artists such as plaintiffs to transport drugs, ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms, transport firearms, solicit minors, exotic dancers, sex workers. Now, wait a second. What's the difference there? Do what? Sex workers and, and dancers? Exotic dancers only dance sex workers work? Well, I, I mean, yeah, I guess, you know, exotic dancers don't necessarily always have sex with the client. I see. They're for show, not for play. Yeah, you have to pay them a lot. Understood. And to utilize their talents and labor to produce music. I'm going to be honest, the music seems like a distant afterthought to all this. Yeah, I'll be honest. If I signed up to make beats for Diddy and all I did was traffic drugs and hookers, <laughs> I'd start to be like, hey, I thought... I thought we were going to make some music, dude. Yeah, we're on page 35 of this. Yeah. There has not been a lot of music involved in this situation. It's been mostly uh, this list of The drugs. name I did read that may have escaped is they tried to recruit Chrissy and Rock. Really? Which, ironically, probably would have been a better fate than being with Blueface. Yes, most definitely. At least Diddy can rap on beat. <laughs> uh, wire fraud, acquiring drugs. Right, right, right. Threats of isolation. Yeah, we already talked, but God, they list the drugs again. They gotta be thorough. Fake promises of cash payments. Home on Star Island. Uh, the members of the Rico Enterprise all share a common purchase to come. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> to enrich themselves financially oh, and sexually, sexually at the expense of producers, <laughs> musicians, writers, creators, and artists by maximizing defendants' <laughs> revenues through fraudulent means. I've never heard anyone describe it as enrich themselves sexually. Yeah, that's a pretty good way to put it, actually. That, that's like actually, that. I like the phrasing. Uh, Grammy Awards, right, right. This is just all the shitty promise. Uh oh, J Lo. Where? 184. Uh, upon information, belief this Rico enterprise has existed for at least 20 years, dating Ooh. back to the 1999 nightclub shooting in New York City when Mr. Combs required his then girlfriend, Jennifer Lopez, oh, to transport no. his illegal firearm into the NYC nightclub. Oh, they got Jenny from the block? That's terrible. Damn. Mr. Combs forced his then art, but she's got a big ass where you can hide the gun. <laughs> I guess. You know what's funny is her ass isn't even that big compared to like modern standards. Not anymore. Yeah, that used to be a comically big ass. Yeah, this was, this was, uh, uh, considered i have wondered if you know the downfall of western civilization was the rise of ass men uh it seems look it hasn't helped i guess but yeah yes, that this, used to be comically large this was ridiculously big in 1999 yeah. now bring up ice spice Ugh. yuck and her ham hocks yeah i don't i don't like ice spice i mean i like that she looks autistic I, I, she's got the but ew. yeah it's just yeah, it's not. It's not for me. No, not for me. No, I'll pass. Yeah, I'll leave that to someone. Your else. Honor, I'd like it on the record. I I did not enjoy looking at Ice Spice <laughs> ass. Ace Ross can have that. That's all his. Uh, right, right, right. Transfer of the firearms. Used as power, money, and influence to bribe jurors and witnesses. Well, that is what you do with power, money, and influence. Yeah, as one would expect. If you're on trial, you might as well utilize yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, such as the friend of the shooting victim, Natanya Rubin, who reported to a law enforcement she saw Mr. Combs and not shine, pull the trigger and shoot her friend in the face. You know, I will say this is a big win for Jewish people. What? I haven't heard very many Jewish names involved. We know how to stay away from the camera. I mean, I know who runs the record industry. I know who was, you know, like, oh, well, I'm not going to ask Diddy about his, his parties. Well, see, when the, Diddy asks you to party, you just got to say no. One guy who doesn't have a Jewish manager gets up to all this. That's would have been, true. They would have been like, Diddy, you're, you're fucking up the money here. Yeah, someone would have tried. We like coercing people into bad contracts, but this. <laughs> this is a step too far. Uh, the Rico Enterprise continued throughout the years, including during Mr. Combs' 10-year relationship with his girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, according to Ms. Ventura's civil complaint. 
This Rico Enterprise continued in her relationship when Mr. Combs forced her to carry his gun in her purse. Did he always made bitches carry his gun? Yeah, he's never committing the crime in any of these situations. He always forces it, someone else to do it. It's amazing to be so careful yet so nonchalant at the same time. Well, it always catches up with That's it. true. I mean, I guess over 20 years, what are you going to you know? Holy shit. Mr. Combs forced her to carry his gun, forced her to gauge in unwanted sexual acts with male prostitutes, sex workers. All right, I don't like that male prostitutes were at the party. Forced her to consume consume dangerous amounts of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol, and paying a member of sec- his security team $5,000 to blow up the vehicle oh, of yeah. Kid Cuddy because he was jealous and insecure of their relationship. And now Kid Cuddy's gay. Damn, five grand to blow up a car? That is a bargain. You better be really good. I thought that would be at least a $30,000 affair. I mean, I guess that's why it didn't work. Didn't we just read something the other day about a guy who was using five grand to get people killed? That was, oh, yeah, yeah. it's the Russia shooting. Yeah, right, 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 the terrorists. I've been grossly overestimating the value of a human life. Apparently, yeah. it's significantly cheaper than It's good thought. news if we ever need to take someone out. Yes, if I ever have to kill a bunch of people via I, car yeah, bombs. I didn't, I didn't realize a used Honda could get someone killed. <laughs> uh, they were dis. Yes, yes, yes. It seems like this is mostly just going over the same shit, but putting it all in uh, one convenient location. Maybe, well, there's still 40 pages left, though, so it, uh, uh, relying, what is this? Defendants, right, the whole whole list here, directs, controls, and participates in the activities of the enterprise in a variety of ways set forth herein, including as the employer, parent, company, sponsor, and respondent superior of defendant Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and other and former members of the defendant's associates and staff throughout the relevant period, defendants Lucian Grange, Ethiopia, Habert, Tamarium, Combs Global, Bowtown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group oversaw the marketing and soliciting of potential artists, creative musicians, producers from their headquarters in New York, California, and Florida to consumers in New York, California, and Florida around the country, relying on mail, email, social media, text messages, and WhatsApp messages to distribute interstate wires to disseminate the misleading information described herein. Well, that's it's, not good. Damn, they got them on wire fraud, too? They seem to have got them on just about every crime known to man. Yeah, well, that's another bad move. If you're going to be hiring sex workers and buying drugs, don't cross a border to do it. That's yeah. like a significantly larger punishment. Yeah. Robin Greenhill, well, maybe maybe the guy, you know, a certain group of people. Maybe they did step in. Yeah, Robin <laughs> Greenhill, the accountant, <laughs> would, would ensure the wiring funds transfer cash payments uh, to sex workers. God, that's got a uh, just a guy who goes to school to become an accountant, and you're just paying whores for Diddy. Oh, Diddy's been busy this month. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Diddy's blowing the budget. And this is irresponsible spending. Uh, young Miami. I don't mind the <laughs> prostitutes, but why so much cash? <laughs> oh, look at this. Young Miami Jade and Daphne Joy were paid a monthly fee to work as Mr. Combs' sex workers. He had a roster of whores. I'd say, isn't that also just a job? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look, he was given into the economy. He was providing. <laughs> Work. Look, twice a month he paid me a, a you know a reasonable salary. These are American made jobs. This is the new version <laughs> of manufacturing. Who yeah, needs, sex work. Yeah, who needs Detroit when you can sell your ass? Oh, it's the only thing we make in America anymore. Yeah. Whores. During uh, the 10 years preceding the filing of this action and to the present, all defendants did cooperate jointly and uh, severally in the commission of three or more of the predicate acts that are itemized. Yeah, okay. These guys are really fucked. <laughs> yeah, uh, boy, are they. Yeah, this is a, a this is a problem with wire fraud. Is it's very easy to track once you find it. Yeah, the digital age does not make this uh, difficult to uncover. Let's see. Uh, okay, he was just saying he solicited them for sexual work and and music. This is a a very lengthy mail charge. fraud. Defendants committed multiple acts of mail fraud. What the fuck are defendants voluntarily and intentionally devised and participated in a scheme to defraud plaintiffs out of money in reliance on the mail? Defendants, <laughs> mail should be spent M A L E. Defendants committed these acts with the intent to defraud plaintiff Jones and the artists, creatives, musicians, and producers. Defendants used the mail for the purpose of executing the fraudulent scheme herein. Specifically, defendants agreed to the acts of mail fraud described throughout this complaint. In addition, defendants agreed to rely on the mail to secure wire frauds, cash payments from purchasers of the illegal firearms, and drug defense. Okay, so that's it was. He was just wiring money. Oh, okay. That is a, a big, big 
no-no to all our uh, drug-dealing, firearms-dealing listeners. Yeah, yeah, it you is. You should not— uh, Don't use the mail. I mean, they're so good at their job, it's hard not to. Yeah. We may have reached the— Oh, second cow's Oh, back. God damn it. It's, there's a part two. All right, hold on. I got to take a piss. Can you— <laughs> Yes. You, you cool. All right, we'll cover for now. Uh, go to the Patreon if you hadn't gone to the Patreon yet, because we don't have super chat. So, so give us money, chat. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out for our our long extended extended live stream. It's just it's too good to to turn off, you know. What an unfortunate unfortunate week for Diddy. My word, chat. What's going on? Oh, he's coming back. Don't worry. He's coming back, but he doesn't have the iron bladder I have. I have a supreme iron bladder. While he's waiting, let's let's get another Zen, folks. I'm a Zinner now. It's never good when you, you're charged with so many crimes that someone needs to take an intermission before reading through the rest of them. God damn. You can take, oh, okay. Let me, uh, as long as we're getting up and doing shit, let me see what kind of battery life I got. We're down at 40? Do you want to swap as long as we're we're taking a break here? And, uh, well, we're not taking a break. I don't mean to give people that uh, that perception. We will remain here as we, we perform the, the impossible task. Because for some reason, we love the same model of laptop, but one of the vanished some time ago, and now we have to share it. Like a couple of pores. There's another one on the way, but it hasn't arrived yet. So I, I eagerly await the arrival of a charger I can call my very own someday. It'll be, I'll feel like a very rich man. Okay. Look, we don't have Diddy money yet. Look, I ain't got laptop charger money. <laughs> $25. Okay. Oh, no. Well, I guess I actually I don't need the volume plugged in, do I? Not necessarily. Okay, we haven't... Uh... We're locked back in, folks. All right, let's... Wait, is it... I can't tell if it's... Uh... Oh, plugged in. Okay, we are good. Mr. Jones incorporates, by reference, all preceding paragraphs and re-alleges them. Oh, no. They got another... They, they got a guy to reaffirm all the above? Uh, I was there. I saw him do it. <laughs> Jesus. As described above, Mr. Combs frightened and placed plaintive an apprehension of harm when he physically and sexually assaulted him from October 2022 oh. to October of 2023. Ah, uh, that's a long time to keep going back. Dude, getting butt-fucked for a year straight? And you still don't have a record out? <laughs> <laughs> Just the friction alone. He could probably start a fire with his ass. It was like a flint. Well, no, that's why they liked him. He had a smooth ass. <laughs> I, no friction ass. I mean, the most shocking part of all of this really is how hideous this man is. It's a fat guy. But he should have like an Astro Glide sponsorship. Look, you know, they, they used to sell like giant tubs of Astro Glide. I want to see. What is it? What was is that it? for like the gays to buy in bulk? Uh, or just for like, was that for porn companies? I would imagine. They're like 10 grand, I think. Oh, maybe it's way cheaper. No, no, no. These don't <laughs> this have... is what they have at the gay Jiffy Lube. Yeah. <laughs> lube life. Sex. Wait, for under a grand. Wow, we can fuck our ass all we want. All right. You know, they really should put you on a list for buying 55 gallons we of should, lube. We should replace our table here with just a barrel a of barrel lube. A barrel of lube. Did he approve <laughs> Do lube? you guys want to sponsor a podcast? <laughs> Hold on. Why are there 146,000 ratings on this? Yeah, wait a second. Hold on. I've been sidetracked. They're all from moment. Diddy. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see the one star ratings. Ooh, I very solid lube, but beware it's it burns. <laughs> <laughs> the lube burned immediately when I used it the first time. My oh. wife and I were about to begin being intimate when I applied this lube, and then I yelped in pain. <laughs> this lube immediately caused a burning <laughs> sensation at my urethral. Oh, god damn, dude! I, <laughs> damn, they were, he finally got his wife to agree to try anal. His dick was on fire the moment he put the lube How on. How long would it take to go through 55 gallons of lube, though, just fucking Oh, uh, no, I think this is an eight-pack, eight oh, ounces. Okay, well, that's way less than 55 gallons. Hold on, can we can we filter this by the 55-gallon one? This, that also much uh, better explains the the number 
of look i assume if you buy 55 gallons you were satisfied okay it doesn't seem like none of the ones sorry 32 sorry. there one at the bottom was 32 what? 32 ounces that's pretty big oh why do they always tempt me with watches <laughs> that's a good looking watch all right i'm sorry sorry that's a Seiko version of the batman that's a Okay. Anyways, uh, th wait. What were we looking at? <laughs> <laughs> it burns so bad. Scroll up, <laughs> right there at the bottom. Burns, burns so bad. Burns burned me. Do not buy it. Burns so bad. I got this as a replacement for another type <laughs> because I'd been having yeast infections. Ew. I wanted something gliss yucky, and I want something glycerin free, so I wouldn't have to deal with that again. The stuff I had before started to burn while I was recovering from the yeast infection. So at first, when I tried this, I thought, "Oh, I'm still having issues. It's not the lube. It's me." I had a travel size bottle of Swiss Navy and used that with no burning. <laughs> oh, God. Why are you using lube for your in your STD infested pussy? Also, who is who is sitting down uh, sitting down to, to write this review? At least it wasn't super expensive. I guess I'll take my chances. <laughs> well, that's what a well, trooper. It burned, but it was cheap, you know. I'm uh, upset I was signed into my Amazon account for that. <laughs> well, it's sure good I'm to know. going to be getting a bunch of bizarre <laughs> recommendations. It's good to know you can buy that in bulk. Yeah, it's nothing but Seiko watches and anal lube. To buy uh, the barrel. <laughs> yeah, 55 gallons of anal lube and a fucking Patek. This guy's into watches and gay <laughs> sex parties. <laughs> that's the one thing he loves. It's telling the time and fucking... <laughs> He's a very prompt. Yes, he's a punctual rapist. <laughs> he always sets his, you can set your watch by his uh, dick. That's why he never misses a party. Yeah. <laughs> At least, uh, I had to time all of Diddy's freak offs. <laughs> I just stood in the corner with a stopwatch. Excellent time, Mr. Combs. Would you, would you, would you like a platter of Tusi? <laughs> Please stop fingering my asshole. <laughs> Mr. Combs forcibly touched and attempted or and or threatened. Jesus, that's a lot of ands. Mr. Combs forcibly touched and attempted and or threatened to touch plaintiff's intimate area. <laughs> why why be coy now? Yeah. 44 pages in, you can't say penis. He already told us he fingered their ass. And he touched the plaintiff with his own intimate body parts. <laughs> he was using his dick like one of those. Yes. Yeah, like when a guy points at a map, those like fold out things. <laughs> Did he's he just, so high on Molly? He's just walking around <laughs> rubbing his limb dick on people. He's just slapping it on a whiteboard, pointing to items. Just <laughs> walking around going, You ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Mr. Combs violently gripped and palmed Mr. Jones's anus. <laughs> he violently gripped his anus <laughs> like a bowling ball. <laughs> he crotched without consent. Man, I'm sorry we're laughing at this guy getting raped, but you shouldn't have been raped in such a funny way. <laughs> to describe it like that is so funny. Violently, violently gripped and palmed. Gripped and palmed. God, yeah. <laughs> It's like the claw from Liar Liar. Oh. Jesus. Okay. Uh, Mr. Combs, yeah, he violently gripped his anus. I do that every morning, too. That's how I wake up. I violently grip an anus. <laughs> Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to work in Mr. Combs' bathroom. Watch Mr. Combs as he showered. Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to work in the studio while Mr. Combs stripped naked to get his body massaged. All right. Yeah, that's pretty weird if I'm working on, on Pro Tools and Diddy's yeah, getting it, jerked off by an Asian lady. Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to work while Mr. Combs walked around. It, it sounds like Diddy just liked having his dick out yeah i mean he just sounds like a nudist i think it's just a power move yeah as a result of mr combs conduct plaintiff has suffered continues to suffer hard, <laughs> including physical injury that's how hard he gripped his ass <laughs> fucking bruised it <laughs> he, he bruised, bruised the fruit it's no good anymore you can't eat a bruised banana <laughs> no producer will ever want to fuck my <laughs> ass now yeah my ass is unfuckable did he did he did he how am i gonna it? get another job i'm never gonna produce a hit <laughs> Uh, he did physical injury, severe emotional distress, humiliation. Well, I'm sorry, we're at it. <laughs> sorry, buddy. <laughs> Our bad. <laughs> Anxiety and other consequential damages for which he's entitled to an award of monetary damages and other relief. Oh, okay, so he wants money. Oh, of course. <laughs> he should have taken the $20 million house. <laughs> he could have solved all of this. The conduct of Mr. Were you about to say something? Are we good? No. Okay. I'm, just, you know, I'm just so funny about getting Xanax from PTSD because you got raped. <laughs> from Sean Diddy Gomes. The Diddy PS PTSD. Now, wait. Before we continue any further, how... Ah, uh, PTSD. <laughs> it's right there. Hit the button. Uh, comes age. It's 50-something, right? Yeah, 54. Okay. Still fucking like a young man. So this is all... This is all going on after the man was 50 years old. Post-50, it's impressive to have this type of, you know, 
sex drive. It's hard to believe someone was doing that many drugs and was able to fucking keep it going. That's that's you know real. I guess wealth buys health. Yeah, the conduct of Mister Combs described above was willful, wanton, and malicious. Those are the names of the <laughs> <laughs> malicious. Get over here, <laughs> malicious. Come <laughs> suck this producer's dick. At all relevant times, Mr. Combs acted with conscious disregard for plaintiff's rights and feelings, acted with the knowledge of or with reckless disregard for the fact that his conduct was certain to cause injury and or humiliation to plaintiff and intended to cause fear, physical injury, <laughs> and or pain and suffering to plaintiff by virtue of foregoing plaintiff is entitled to recover punitive damages. <laughs> Third cause of action. Oh, God damn it, did he? California's bystander negligent infliction of emotional <laughs> distress. distress. Lord, uh, sweat. Mr. Jones incorporates by reference all preceding paragraphs and realleges them as set forth fully herein. Mr. Jones brings this claim against Mr. Combs and Jay Combs for the CRS shooting of G of. Yeah, be more specific. Okay, I think this is the part we skipped earlier. It was a it was a party, and then someone got shot outside the party, and they dragged him into the bathroom where they cleaned him up. That's what all that. Uh, the oh, okay. Was. The elements of bystander. Oh, it's a the abbreviation. Nyad negligent infliction of emotional distress are is closely related to the injury victim is present at the scene of the injury producing event. Uh, as a result, suffers serious emotional distress, a reaction beyond that which would not be anticipated in a disinterested witness, and which is not an abnormal response to the circumstances. I'm not going to cite the case law here, but as detailed above, Mr. Jones was two feet away from G Whoops. as either J. Combs or Mr. Combs shot him multiple times in the restroom of CRS. All right, well, now that they actually shot someone themselves. Yeah, damn, it was about that life. As detailed above, Mr. Jones was the only individual that aided G as he laid on the bathroom floor in a fetal position, bleeding out. As detailed above, Mr. Combs and J. Combs orchestrated the cover-up. Well, that's what you do when you murder a man. <laughs> yeah, what you do you want to do? cover it up. Confess? Yeah, and then you lose your mansions and yachts. <laughs> you can't have uh, freak-offs in prison. Well, you can. It's probably not going to go the way you want it yeah, to. Yeah, they're not going to be the same in prison. Yeah, Without the coke and molly. You're going to be playing a different role too. Uh, and through Fahim Muhammad lied to the LAPD and forced Mr. Jones and all other attendees of the writers camp to lie to the police as well. Mr. Combs and Jay Combs knew that they shot G in the restroom and that G was shot as he was leaving the studio. Mr. Combs and Jay Combs intentional deception caused a delay in G receiving immediate medical care. Well, look, after you shoot a guy, I don't think we're terribly <laughs> concerned about his like, oh no, he's gonna go to the doctor. Like, oh right. <laughs> yeah, it's like you just did that. You just shot, you pointed the gun, and <laughs> shot him multiple trigger. times. Yeah, I don't think they were going to rush him to a hospital. Mr. Jones had to run down the block and convince them that the shooting had ended. These events uh, traumatized Mr. Jones. It caused him to suffer from insomnia, PTSD, severe anxiety, just rolling around, grabbing his ass. <laughs> no. Well, no. that's why, that's why I, I took him to produce any records. <laughs> that's why it took him so long to call the cops. Yeah, they had yeah. to pry Diddy off of him. <laughs> He's attached to him like, just, just, like a koala on a branch. Just one for the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just let me, let me get a quick dip. <laughs> He's still warm. Let me check your oil. Uh, additionally, the fear and silence from the remaining witnesses aided in the reinforcement of Mr. Combs' statement that he is untouchable. <laughs> I gotta say, if I got away with all this for 20 straight years... Look, I'm gonna start thinking that, too. I'm gonna start feeling pretty fucking bulletproof. I mean, that I get, like, I get, you know, Epstein and the ditties of the world acting out, but like, wait, they're gonna arrest me now? Yeah, after two decades, now is Also, after, like, 20 years, be like, well, I've had a great run. <laughs> this, it might be worth it to Diddy. To just, you know, he'll go kill himself uh, or someone will do it for him. I'll yeah. Have Epstein. Yeah. Do you want to be here for a long time or a good time? But he really had a great party. Yeah, he lived. He lived. OK. Uh, I already read that. As a result, Mr. Combs, J. Combs' conduct, Plaintiff Jones has suffered and continues to suffer harm, including severe emotional distress, anxiety and other consequences, consequential damages for which he's entitled to an award of monetary damages and other relief. Yeah, his uh, ass wants relief. Yeah, he needs preparation H now. Um, <laughs> they fucked the hemorrhoids into him. Uh, they, uh, Mr. Combs and Jay Combs acted with conscious disregard for the plaintiff's rights and feelings. They hurt my feelings, Your Honor. Yeah, by viciously grabbing his ass. 
uh, acted with the knowledge of or with reckless disregard for the fact that their conduct was certain to cause injury to the plaintiff and intended to cause fear, physical injury, and or pain and suffering to plaintiff by virtue of the foregoing plaintiff is entitled to recover punitive damages. Jesus, now we get on to sexual... Oh, this is the one where the girl sucked his dick. Let's... Ooh-hoo. Maybe it'll get described differently, but yeah. This is... Uh, so, Thanksgiving Day, Jane Doe, one, forcibly touched and attempted and or threatened to touch. <laughs> I'm gonna suck, I swear to God, I'm going to suck your fucking dick. <laughs> threatened to touch a penis it doesn't seem like a crime. <laughs> I'll touch your penis. <laughs> you shut the fuck up. Or I'll grab your dick right now. <laughs> I'll show you who's boss. Give me your penis. Prove you ain't gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me touch it. If it gets hard, you're gay. <laughs> Jane Doe 1 used her mouth and performed... Well, that is how you do it. He performed oral <laughs> sex on plaintiff while he was urinating. Well, that's kind of icky. Yuck. Yeah. That's that's icky. Plaintiff fought her off. <laughs> just <laughs> his dick wagging around. He's peeing all over the walls. No, no, stop it. Stop threatening. Uh, no means no. No <laughs> means no. <laughs> stop threatening to touch my penis. <laughs> my penis is mine. Stop threatening you cannot with touch it. A, stop threatening with a BJ. <laughs> Uh, Jane Doe 1 then followed Mr. Jones outside of the restroom, began undressing in front of Mr. Combs, and his associates straddled Mr. Jones and attempted to have forced sexual intercourse with him. Well, there is a certain part of this equation that she can't perform without him, you know. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's hard. Rising to the occasion. It's hard for women to commit rape just for, yeah, that particular little sticking point. Also, I guess it'd probably be hard to argue you didn't want it if your dick is hard. If you're hard. Your Honor, my penis was lying. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the the move I would have gone with here if I were in his position is you got to say Diddy was drugging you with Viagra and that way you were hard against your will. That is the one drug they keep leaving out. I I very much doubt it was not around. It had to have been used. Uh, right. Jay, the follower of blah, 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 began in dressing in front of Mr. Combs and associates straddled, attempted to have forced sexual intercourse as a result of Jay, uh, Jane Doe 1's conduct. That means there's more than one Jane Doe. Oh, no. Plaintiff has suffered and continues to suffer harm, including physical injury, severe emotional distress, humiliation, anxiety, and other consequential damages to which he is entitled an award of monetary damages. I'm not so sure about this one, guys. I, I yeah, don't... what? He's, is he tre- yeah, he's probably severely emotionally distressed because he realized he was gay. Yeah, all the other shit didn't sound so great. This one sounds not so bad. In terms of how his job went. In terms of needing to have a lawsuit about something, this doesn't seem to crack the, uh, the yeah. top ten here. The conduct uh, was, yeah, right. This just gets into she did it deliberately. Fifth cause of action. God damn it. Premises liability. Oh, this is just going to be about the uh, the house uh, for for in which the, the previous sexual assault was committed. Okay. Uh, uh, Cuba again. Oh, no. <laughs> God, poor Cuba. Oh, no, I kind of want to read the details on Cuba. <laughs> so many people didn't get named by name, but Cuba Gooding Jr., yeah, why did everyone else get to be the, the rapper who dated Nicki Minaj and Cuba Gooding Jr. got called out by his whole fucking name? <laughs> In multiple paragraphs. Repeatedly. Here, Mr. Jones was sexually assaulted by Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, who hasn't? On a yacht rented by Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands. <laughs> what a what a whoops ironic name. In January of 2023, Mr. Combs was present while Mr. Jones was being assaulted by Cuba Gooding Jr. Oh, that is one of the funniest people you could get molested by for being real. That's just what a silly person to, uh. to diddle you. Mr. Jones was legally on the premises as a guest and invitee of Mr. Combs. Cuba Gooding Jr. was legally on the premise as a guest and invitee of Mr. Combs. Mr. Combs owned through renting the premises and had dominion control. Okay, so I guess the, the point they're trying to make here is Diddy knew that Cuba was a, was a diddler. Yeah. So he is responsible for inviting a diddler over to his house. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, Mr. Combs breached his duty. <laughs> That's what Cuba Gooding Jr. did to, did to Mr. Jones. He breached his duty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, good uh, stuff. This. <laughs> okay, we, we get back to the statement about everything being wanton. That's just making me want Chinese food every mm. time I read it. <laughs> want the wanton, they serve yeah. me wanton soup. Yeah, some wanton disregard. Uh, seventh case of action, trafficking in victims of the Protection Act. Ooh. Now we're talking... Mr. Jones incorporates by reference all preceding paragraphs and realleges them as set forth fully herein. Defendants. 
Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Chris and Corm, and Combs Global. No one intentionally participated in, perpetrated, assisted, supported, facilitated a sex trafficking venture that was in and affecting interstate and foreign commerce. Those are rough words to have in any allegation together and with others in violation. Well, I mean, look. <laughs> oh, good point. <laughs> it does make sense that if you're going to do this, you got to have a good LLC to do it under. There, If there's one thing you can't say, it's that this was not professional. No, the man, they did it right. The man knew how to run a racketeering <laughs> outfit. <laughs> Among other things, defendants, all right, I'm not reading all their fucking names every time they list them. Uh, they recruited, enticed, provided, obtained, advertised, and solicited by various means, Mr. Jones, as well as other class members. I'm assuming that means Rico. Oh, could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowing that defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corm, and oh, Jesus, well, you got to list them every time we get it. They would use means of force, threats of force, fraud, coercion. Now, wait, what is fraud when it comes to sex? Oh, uh, maybe saying this for something. <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> Look, I'm into fat dudes, but trans people. I draw the line there. Yeah, this is Your deception. Honor, she was supposed to be a female sex worker. Okay. <laughs> Uh, they used all this in such means to cause Mr. Jones, as well as others, some of whom were under the age of 17. Well, oh, that's not good. Geez, that is really bad to engage. Well, wait, it does depend on state. That's it's, true, but I think all the states he's listed are 18. Right. It, well, also, if you, it doesn't matter the state. If you cross a state line for the explicit purpose of this, it is illegal. You is, this, is this why the yacht is so crucial? Yeah, international waters, man. That's where everyone goes. You go, whatever, 15 miles off the coast, and you can fuck away. <laughs> I'd love to see the dude who first realized that loophole. There's some old pirate. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, if we do it off the coast of Florida, we can have a sex ring. Blackbeard was having freak-offs off the coast. <laughs> <laughs> Our ditty's gonna want to party, <laughs> and you got to tell him no. You gotta tell him no, matey. <laughs> He's searching for a different kind of booty. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> so did, he show, did he show up and be like, I thought you had the right booty. <laughs> yeah, this he, is just gold. I don't have anything to do with treasure. He bought all these boats. <laughs> I just I get booty. <laughs> I've been misled. I've been had through means uh, of fraud and coercion. Oh, you're a butt pirate. <laughs> <laughs> you want the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Defendants, uh, all of them again, and it's a place, had actual knowledge that they were perpetrating, facilitating Mr. Combs' sexual abuse and sex trafficking conspiracy to recruit, solicit, entice, coerce, harbor, transport, obtain, and provide Mr. Jones, as well as others whom were under the age of 17, into commercial... Wait, Mr. Jones... Oh, okay, I thought they were saying he was under 17. Into commercial sex acts through means of forced threats of forced fraud abuse process and coercion. Wow, that's all the ways... What <laughs> what is commercial? I guess for for money, right? Commercial sex act. I would assume it's a business, yeah, yeah transaction. Not like a Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Diddy's advertising his freak offs at the Super Bowl. Yeah, it was after the the State Farm commercial with Arnold Diddy. <laughs> I mean, look, if there's a good place to have a, a freak off, it's yeah. probably Super Bowl Sunday. That is the time. Uh, they intentionally paid for, facilitated, perpetrated, and participated in his violations. Um, and we're in reckless disregard of the fact that Mr. Combs would coerce, defraud, and force. There's always a list of words. He never just does one thing. He's, no, he does it multiple ways. There's a bunch of verbs and adverbs going on here. Uh, defendants, foreign commerce, uh, including music distributing, publishing activities. I feel like you can leave that out of the rape case. The rape is, <laughs> the rape is pretty bad. Him, him not paying them their Spotify dividends is... Not Back. only did Diddy steal my ass, yeah. He not only is he a rapist, he's a thief. <laughs> he took my royalties. <laughs> he stole twenty dollars. Huh? Uh, you think Diddy molest rapes you? <laughs> just wait to see what Spotify pays. <laughs> they knowingly participated in sex trafficking and furthered the Combs sex trafficking venture. The concrete steps constituted taking part in the sex trafficking venture and were necessary for its success. The concrete steps constituted active engagement by all the people in a sex trafficking venture. Uh, they knew it was act. They knew its active engagement would lead to and cause coercive commercial sex trafficking. Bummer. Uh, as part of perpetrating TVPA violations between these days, uh, they concealed its delivery of hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash to Mr. Combs and his associates. Well, you know, running a sex empire <laughs> isn't cheap. It takes money to, to take, make money. It takes money to make money. It you takes know? money to take asses. <laughs> uh, they. 
also willfully failed to file required taxes. How how have people not learned this lesson? Yeah. If you're yeah. going to be committing all these crimes, the tax man needs his cut. You got to pay Uncle Sam. You can't leave him out of this. No matter what you're selling, whether it be music or ass, <laughs> you got to pay the tax man. That's the one thing the Jews figured out. You got to pay your taxes. <laughs> like, well, if you got to pay your taxes, are they going to get you, Diddy? And that's why we don't get caught. <laughs> it's our superpowers. Uh, turbo tax is my <laughs> <laughs> conduct. Oh, wow. Harsh words. The conduct was outrageous <laughs> and intentional. On or about January 2023, Justin Combs engaged in a... F whoa! Whoa! <laughs> whoa! Fucking in front of your dad. Yeah, look, I was here for everything else. Engaged in a freak off session on a yacht with his father and a sex worker. Ah, uh, that's like uh, um, that's like a T.S. Eliot script. Ah, uh, dude. Well, you know what? I, now I'm tying back. I saw a clip earlier today, completely out of context, so I don't know how accurate it was, of uh, Jack Osborne, Ozzy Osborne's son, was on some show, and he was talking about how uh, he knew of someone very, very famous in the industry who had an incestuous relationship. So yeah, maybe. his father. <laughs> yeah, Jack was <laughs> describing himself. Talk about someone who's done enough coke to get into some shenanigans. Could have been Yachty. Or not Yachty, I'm sorry. I just read the word Yacht <laughs> and I, I made up a... <laughs> yeah, Lil Yachty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got fucked by Diddy. I was. I also was thinking in my head, my dad did the air conditioning at Ozzy Osbourne's house when uh, the house he lived in for the show, the Osbournes. He said at one point he had to get into his garage <laughs> to get somewhere, and Ozzy... Couldn't find the key, and he said he spent thirty <laughs> minutes just following Ozzy around. And Ozzy just kept going, "Where's the keys? I don't know where the keys are. I need the damn keys. I don't know where." They and he just did that <laughs> apparently for thirty straight minutes, just walking around, well, shuffling <laughs> around his house. Anyways, God, I gotta get rich and famous. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. You can really be incompetent. You can just turn your brain to mush with cocaine and, and just find a very devious woman to run all the paperwork. Yeah, everyone needs their Ghislaine Maxwell behind a, a very powerful <laughs> rapist, just powerful woman. It is a woman who's not, you know, afraid to commit sex crimes. Uh, let's see what they knowing and intentional conduct has caused Mr. Jones serious harm, including without limitation, physical no limits. <laughs> That's what that limited <laughs> records is about. Uh, they should have known. Well, this is why Master P was making them say, uh. <laughs> <laughs> it was all in front of us the whole uh, time. So many signs we missed. No, 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 no. I did see a guy once when I was in Stockton. I was shopping at, uh, fuck, I forget. There was there was a very specific grocery store for the poor that was up at 24-7. But he was walking around, and he was trying to walk around this aisle. And he fucking he hit his shin on, like, a thing. <laughs> and he went, uh, exactly like Master P. And I couldn't stop fucking laughing. It was, like, 3 in the morning. I was buying waffle mix that came in a big container that she had to pour into a baggie, like a drug deal. <laughs> yeah, but it, it just... was a self-serve bucket of waffle mix. They had self-serve <laughs> Kool-Aid waffle mix and, like, bootleg versions of Cheez-Its. Oh, that's and how you know it is for the blacks. But, yes, the guy, the guy, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, they was on the yacht, right, right, he's fucking his dad or whatever, um. Right. Uh, da, da, da. Mr. Jones harm that is sufficiently serious under all surrounding circumstances to compel a reasonable person of the same background and in the same circumstances to perform or to continue performing commercial sexual activity in order to avoid incurring that harm. This case does not involve mere fraud. <laughs> Who the fuck wrote this? What kind of like crime reporter? This isn't just mere fraud. No, my good fellow citizens. <laughs> this is fraud of a level you've never thought. Ah, uh, this is criminal conduct and perpetrating TVPA violations was outrageous and intentional <laughs> because it was deliberate furtherance of a widespread. That's how we like disasters too. It's widespread. <laughs> And dangerous criminal sex trafficking organization. Uh, all these defendants' conduct also evinced a high degree of moral turpitude and demonstrated <laughs> such wanton dishonesty. Jesus, get rid of uh, your thesaurus. Yes, yeah, stop fuck? being so wordy about anal rape. <laughs> As to imply a criminal indifference to civil obligations. Uh, Mr. Jones, who was the victim, Mr. Combs, sexual abuse and sex trafficking. You know what's crazy? I thought this was going to include a lot of victims. This is all one dude's perspective. Yeah, this is just one fella that probably means there's thousands of pages of documents to come i mean you think you think he didn't have someone like this before this guy yeah this didn't start in 2022 yeah, this is a well-oiled machine <laughs> that's what he called his ass <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> it's too easy to hit the button these days. I'm ashamed of myself. Uh, profiting by undertaking illegal, high risk, high reward actions. I'm not sure that's what I call it. But, uh, right. And they did this intentionally. Okay. California premise liability. This is just another premise liability. Oh, no. The... They violate OSHA. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't wearing hard hats while having gay sex. Uh, oh, wait. Hold on. Um, defendants oh this is for the shooting they had security check the songwriters producers and artists but neglected to search justin combs and sean combs for the possession of firearms when they entered crs defendants blah 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 negligently failed to take steps to either provide adequate security and make the condition safe or warn plaintiff of the dangerous condition all of which caused the plaintiff <laughs> to <right>. suffer <laughs> no one warned him of how what was going to happen <laughs> yeah, no one warned him of the impending uh, murder <laughs> As a proximate result of the negligence of defendants in each of them, plaintiff was hurt and injured in his health, strength, and activities, sustaining injuries to their nervous system. Oh, no. <laughs> they, my, my, uh, my client needs a nerve tonic now to settle his... Sustaining injuries to his nervous system. What is that even? What a bizarre way to phrase it. I, I guess they could be saying, like, from the drugs, he fried his fucking CNS or PNS. I mean, look. And his PNS. Did he be wanting to party? Okay. All right. That's, I'm amusing myself. Uh, he suffered great. That says general, not genital, damages in amount, <laughs> according to proof. As a further proximate result of the negligence of defendants, plaintiff has incurred and will continue to incur medical and related expenses in an amount, according to proof. Wow. Oh, uh, this is all the money he's asking for. General damages, medical, medical, loss of earning, interest. Well, uh, wait, maybe a certain group <laughs> wait, of people what? get involved here. <laughs> What's the interest <laughs> on your asshole? Costs <laughs> cost of suit occurred herein. Uh, other and further relief. Okay. Jesus, nine cause of action, ninth cause of action. You know, for actually only being 73 pages, this is remarkably thorough. It is a jam-packed yeah, lawsuit. This is a lot. I'm like, I think the Epstein documents were hundreds, and even those weren't quite this thorough. It is an action-packed affair. <laughs> uh, it's like a fucking Michael Bay movie. <laughs> Just asses exploding like <laughs> Aiding, abetting, and inducing a sex trafficking venture. What is inducing a sex? Doesn't that mean just operating a sex trafficking venture? Well, I, guess. I guess we'll find out. Defendants, all these people, aided, abetted, and induced Sean Combs' sex trafficking venture that was in and affecting interstate and foreign commerce together and with others in violation of that law, right? They had abetted Mr. Combs' perpetrating of coercive sex trafficking and Mr. Combs' corpses co-conspirators knowingly benefiting from course of sex trafficking uh these i i i it seems silly to have to cite the specific law. Like we get, <laughs> we get coercive sex trafficking as violation of the law. Well, these lawyers got to get paid too. These crimes were in and affecting interstate and foreign commerce. Interesting. Mr. Combs core conspirators benefited financially and received things of value from the participation in the Combs sex trafficking venture, including payments and other compensation for Mr. Combs. The co-conspirators who benefited financially include defendants Jay Combs, Quorum, and her direct reports. Oh, the mule was getting cut in. Well, good for him. Oh, good for him. That's a good way to negotiate. Mr. Brendan Paul, the the ass of uh, of, <laughs> of legend. Frankie Centella, the ass's assistant. And Moy Bond. Uh, they're punishable under principle. Right, right, right. We get these are crimes. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got I that did, part. I understand all the stuff we've read is not legal. <laughs> it's I not kosher. Murder and uh, child sex trafficking are, are not actually okay. Uh, they aided, abetted, induced Combs and his co conspirator sex trafficking venture and sex trafficking of Plaintiff Jones, knowing that Combs and his co -con or, and his conspirators would use means of force, threats of force, fraud, coercion, and a combination of such means. I like that they, they list it all individual, but they're like, they would also mix it up a little bit. Yeah, every now and then. Yeah, they together. like to keep it fresh. They would do that to cause Mr. Jones, some of whom were under the age of 18, to engage in commercial sex acts. So uh, I guess they're saying he was trying to get people to sleep with underage people, assumably for the, the blackmail. The blackmail, I would assume, yes. Um, I wish they'd list the things of value they received instead of just saying things of value. 
uh, and abetting sexual de- sex trafficking conspiracy to recruit, solicit, entice, coerce, harbor, transport, obtain, and provide Mr. Jones, as well as others, into commercial sex acts through means of force, threats of force, fraud, abuse of process, and coercion. Defendants knew and should have known that Mr. Combs had engaged in acts in violation. Oh, they should have known this was illegal. Oh, t- <laughs> wow. Oh, oh yeah. man, they dragged in Motown records. That's okay. That's who Lucian. Damn, you want to tie this together again? My dad also did the air conditioning <laughs> on Harry Gordon's house. I believe Lucian. You find any vials of lube up there? Damn. They hit my dad with the cancer gun because he knew about Diddy's sex He knew about Diddy's yeah. freak offs. Yeah. <laughs> huh, listen, son, if Diddy ever wants to party, <laughs> you got to tell him no. <laughs> <laughs> now I think about it, my dad used to come home limping. From, uh, <laughs> he Diddy got so much never, money after he came home it, sore. Just a Louis Vuitton bag full of cash <laughs> and a sore ass. Ah, I went to one of Diddy's parties. Yeah. No, for the record, Diddy never fucked my father. <laughs> <laughs> just in yeah. case I need to make that clear. We don't have the money from that. Yeah, I would. we wouldn't be living in this apartment <laughs> yeah. if I had Diddy rape money. Uh under all the surrounding circumstances to compel a reasonable person of the same background and the same circumstance to perform or to continue performing commercial sexual activity in order to avoid incurring that harm. This case, uh, they, again, does not involve mere fraud. Okay, I think this is going to be a repeat of that. Um, yeah, it's the same thing. Moral to your turpitude, one dishonesty. Okay, he's, he's sampling his own works and just repeating it. <laughs> Tenth. God damn it. <laughs> sexual assault. What well, I don't remember what this uh, abbreviation was for. Something negligent. Some negligent something or other. Intersex edict disorder. That makes sense. Yeah. Mr. Jones incorporates, all right, uh, Jane Doe One's conduct created an unreasonable risk of causing emotional distress to plaintiff. And Jane Doe One knew or should have known that such conduct was likely to result in emotional distress that might or would likely cause illness or bodily harm. All right, she look. have diseases? Yeah, what, what? I need you to understand how. Why is a girl touching your penis going to give you a disease? Your Honor, she, she was going to give me cooties. <laughs> yeah. These stage four cooties. I'm sorry, but it's terminal. Uh, Your Honor, I the gay sex was bad, but the cooties. <laughs> the defendant neglected to get his cooties shot. <laughs> Consequences of as a direct approximate result of the negligent conduct of Joe. It, look, she touched a, the guy's dick. It's not the worst thing in the world. Comparatively, yeah. Malicious, willful, cruel. Oh, a cruel BJ. <laughs> 11th case. It God damn it. It's going. <laughs> Mr. Combs' conduct created an unreasonable risk of causing emotional distress. Mr. Combs knew or should have known that such conduct was likely to result in emotional distress that might and or would likely cause illness or bodily harm. I mean, I guess maybe they're saying mental illness is what they're going with here. I mean, it can't be like a, a physical ailment. I like plaintiff's emotional distress was foreseeable to Mr. Combs. <laughs> he knew he wasn't going to like this. Uh, what is... Does that say IID or IIED? Okay, for sexual assault. Uh, Jane Doe 1 engaged conduct or plaintiff that is extreme and outrageous to exceed the bonds of decency. What does bounds mean? Oh, that's bounds. You're right. I'm an idiot. Uh, that I, sounds like one of them, you know, I, I, I lawyer it, words. I think it means bounds in the traditional sense, just defined funny or uh, spelled funny, rather. Third person present. No, bounds. Yeah, wait. No, this is. Not bounds. No. We spelt it right. I meant what I said. Family history. What does... No, that's bound. Why does no one know the meaning of this word? This could be another typo. Seeing as it's also capitalized, that is a bit weird. Man, you're going to be this thorough not even read it? They should have hired me. I've got multiple <laughs> typos. I am the pay to sense. Uh, Jane Doe 1 engaged... Right, right, right. Uh, the bounds of decency in a civilized society, namely by inter alia subjecting him to sexual wow. assault. I'm not sure. I didn't think there would be a Latin for rape. <laughs> from the uh, yeah, Let's see. I'm not familiar with these Latin. Among other things. All right. Listen, All right. Why, yeah, why, do, why do you use Latin to mean basic phrases? Yeah, we get it. You're a fucking dweeb. Yeah, I get it. You have hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. <laughs> the sexual assault and misconduct by Jade Note 1 were extreme and outrageous conduct that shocks the conscience. Wow, this guy really leaves a fucking mundane life. Of yeah, shocks. he's really dragging out this forced blowjob. This is the most traumatic hand job of all time. <laughs> <laughs> shocks. 
Uh, these actions were taken with a. I don't think her intent was to cause substantial. Yeah, I think her intent was to suck your dick. Uh, yeah, I think it was to get you to bust. Yeah, not, it was not pretty cause severe emotional distress. Yeah, her cause was pretty clear. Yes, it was. She was noble in her cause. I guess it just didn't work out the way she wanted it yeah. to. Yeah. More sexual assault. Uh, these are Diddy's uh, sexual assaults. Not Diddy's another? Specific. <laughs> Knowing beneficiary in a sex trafficking venture in violation of the Trafficking Victims Protection Act. Jeez. Uh, defendants, all these guys supported, facilitated legal careers of sex trafficking venture that was in and affecting interstate and foreign commerce together with others in violation of that law. Uh, they took many concrete steps to aid and participate in Mr. Combs' sex trafficking venture. Among the concrete steps that defended Lucian, God, stop listing all of them, uh, took to aid Mr. Combs was providing vast sums of cash. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Well, someone had to fund it. I've never had a vast sum of cash. Yeah, you want Diddy to fund it himself? Which made the sex trafficking venture possible. <laughs> yeah, it really was a shark tank thing. He got investors for his sex cult. Ugh. Providing Mr. Combs with large sum of U.S. currency caused defendants Lucian I get it. To receive financial benefits. Uh, every time I see defendant, I could just skip ahead like three sentences. Uh, their willingness to provide large amounts of cash to Mr. Combs was the quid pro quo for it receiving financial benefits from Mr. Combs. Oh, yeah. They're not going to do this for free. Yeah. They weren't giving him money out of the kindness Come of their on heart. Now. They were giving it out of the, the horniness of their penis. Yeah, of their penis. The cash directly formed part of the commercial nature of the sex acts. The cash was also a necessary and required part of Mr. Combs' recruitment of Plaintiff Jones, as well as other sex workers, prostitutes, and underage minors. By providing... If they provided any evidence of the underage claim, by the way... I mean, I guess this dude's word. There, there's 14 pages left, and I haven't really seen anything yet. I mean, apparently they were at all the parties. Uh, I'm assuming they have copious amounts of communication that are just not in this. Apparently this cash uh, provided went far beyond providing routine sponsorship, partnership, and employer compensation for a subordinate. Oh, was, okay. This was above and beyond normal <laughs> business opportunities. Okay, it, it was far from routine for the defendants uh, to provide substantial sums of cash per year to Mr. Combs, who did not have an apparent legitimate need for such extravagant sums. What do you mean? You need drugs and hookers. Yeah, look, do you think Diddy just had people walking around with Coke and Molly and it didn't cost money? Just because you don't get it doesn't mean it wasn't necessary. Listening. I gotta <laughs> hate what you... When they put it in quotes, I know exactly what's going on. Yeah, booty, booty exploring he's the listening sheer to your ass <laughs> with a uh, with a stethoscope <laughs> the sheer number of listening parties yacht parties and nighttime writers camps after parties <laughs> yeah, went far beyond normal for the music industry <laughs> 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 they knew or should have known that they were feeding mr combs sexual deviancy we actually haven't gotten into much of that either. Like he, he Yeah, this Mr. Jones it seems real clammy when it comes to the specifics of that. After outside of Mr. Combs vigorously grabbing an anus, <laughs> he hasn't actually done much in the rest of this. Uh moreover, the circumstances in which Mr. Combs was requesting such such large amounts were far from routine and should have raised numerous red flags, taking a well outside routine circumstances. Uh, the reason that defendants ignored the numerous red flags about Mr. Combs was to receive financial benefits. Of course. Duh. And his sex trafficking, uh, from Mr. Combs and his sex trafficking venture. Uh, they do gain far from routine financial benefits by ignoring red flags associated with Mr. Combs and by participating in his sex trafficking venture. Among the concrete steps, finally, um, they participate in the sex trafficking venture. The concrete steps were opening up numerous lines of credit for Mr. Cohn's production of the Love Album, his related entities and associates by opening these lines of credit and by consistently sponsoring his <laughs> freak-off parties. Well, did he tell him the money was for a freak-off or was there yeah, another reason? That's true. If I just give Diddy a line of credit and he uses that credit to buy, you know, drugs for his freak-off party... <laughs> How am I in trouble? The sponsoring of these events was affirmative conduct that caused defendants uh, to receive those benefits among the concrete steps uh, of, of to aid the sex traffic venture between about 2000 and continuing through November of 2023. Defendants uh, concealed its delivery of vast sums of cash, likely millions of dollars to Mr. Combs and his associates in order to benefit from the Cone sex trafficking venture. I'm glad we're getting towards the end because my voice is fucking <laughs> I've been reading out loud for two and a half hours. Huh. 
uh, right? They did this, and Universal Music Group can see, music group. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm falling apart. <laughs> Not at the finish line. Uh, concealment of the cash transaction caused it to receive financial benefits through continuation of the Combs sex trafficking venture. Uh, failure to follow AML requirements. I don't know what AML I'm requirements that's paperwork. are. Uh, this failure was not just passive facilitation, but a deliberate omission. This mission was a specific act of concealment, which allowed Combs to continue funding his sex trafficking venture through suspicious transactions that would have otherwise been prevented. Uh, they knowingly participated in it. Sure. Any other super specifics here? Reckless disregard of the fact that Combs would use means of force, threats of force, fraud, coercion, and combination of such means to cause Plaintiff Jones as well as others, some of whom were under the age of 17. That feels like the chorus to this whole thing. Like every time I read that part. I mean, I assume they're saying 17 because then all of it's legal no matter the state. No, there's are actually are 16. Largely. Yeah, for the most part. Uh, sex trafficking, blah, blah, blah. Okay, large amounts of cash. We we get the cash. Did they do anything else? It did detect multiple signs of Combs chorus of sex trafficking venture and continued to participate in the venture, defendants. I mean, yeah, obviously people had an inkling of what was going on. <laughs> they knew the venture was ongoing, which was why Combs required vast sums of cash. They uh, failing failing to train themselves and their staff about recognizing the warning <laughs> signs of sex trafficking. All right. Is that really part of their job description? That seems well outside the scope of being a record producer. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's the police's job. Yeah, the police, the FBI. In fact, they're the same <laughs> agencies that are currently charging Diddy. We're I don't think that, that's on that. Universal Music Group. Yeah, they, they're they not anti-trafficking organization. Uh Okay, this is just more sex trafficking and listing all the defendants, freak off, sex trafficking. Okay, I think this might just be a list of all the defendants here. Um, the group failed to implement an enhanced monitoring of Mr. Combs' sexual parties to ensure that underage girls and sex... Yeah, so this is just, this is basically all just uh, charges of disregard. Yeah. So they're saying he didn't filter all this out. He is responsible for not getting rid, which makes me think maybe Mr. Jones participated in an act with someone he wishes he didn't. Oh, almost up, certainly. Yeah, now he's trying to blame Diddy for, like... Yeah, I mean, that's what you have to do. You have to go with the, no, Diddy made me do it. Well, that's what I'm here to say, is P. Diddy is innocent. Yeah, we read all that to say <laughs> Diddy did nothing wrong. For the correct wire transfer to my account, <laughs> yeah, I, will, I will defend yeah. Mr. Diddy in his honor. I will actually say I was at those parties, too, and Diddy did nothing bad. I'll do it for $15 million. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even need the Tusi. I don't even need a lakefront property. No. Just a cool fifteen million in cash. Yeah, I'll try. I'll take a nice condo. You know. Yeah. Uh, among the specific acts giving rise to constructive knowledge were the facts that associates Mr. Combs made numerous cash withdrawals from the defendants. According to Robin Greenhill, the circumstances of these withdrawals gave defendants notice that Mr. Combs' sex traffic enterprise was being funded. Uh, Mr. Combs was known for throwing the best parties. Sounds like. It. I mean, yeah. And there's one thing you can't say about this. These sound like great. Times. They sound like fun ass parties. Maybe let's be not honest. For the underage people in the sex, yeah, workers, you know, or the guy getting his anus viciously groped. <laughs> but everyone else, oh no, British royal family. Wait, 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 wait. Uh -oh. uh, Skirt. Mr. Combs is known for, for throwing the best party affiliation with and or sponsorship of Mr. Combs sex trafficking Ooh. parties garnered legitimacy and access to celebrities such as famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British royal prince. Harry. Oh, no. He's got Prince Harry on camera. Yeah. Mr. Combs and Combs controlled entities made uh, two defendants. Uh, I mean, we already know Prince Harry liked Coke. They profited from their affiliation with Mr. Combs and their sponsorship of his sex trafficking parties. Mr. Combs and Combs controlled entities used sponsorship funds in exchange for defendants. Uh, facilitation participation in the sex trafficking venture, including its willingness to provide large amounts of cash in suspicious circumstances and to allow their failure to report these sponsorships on their taxes. Well, okay, look, you can't exactly fault them for not putting a uh, yeah. drug and sex party on their taxes. <laughs> I don't think you get a 1099 <laughs> yeah, for that. So I say, I don't feel like I should be able to get charged with something I can't put on my taxes. Yeah, Diddy didn't send them a W-2. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, this is just more listing. Yeah, where's are we have we gotten through all the? I think so. I think sex. I think we're just about done. 
because uh, yeah, now they're just talking about using yachts and jets and stuff in the facilitation of these. Uh... Oh, I shouldn't have lent Diddy my yacht. <laughs> you never lend Diddy any sort of vehicle. You got to tell him no. <laughs> the case does not involve mere fraud. Okay, this is just yeah, this is just a uh, repeat again. I think. Holy shit! Fifteenth cause of action: obstruction of the enforcement of the trafficking victim protection. Well, it's, oh, I mean, yeah, obviously you're not going to cooperate. Yeah, but what is, uh, what, what are they saying they did? Defendant Sean Combs has a well-documented history of criminal investigations. Uh, the defendants were on notice of Mr. Combs' proclivity to criminal activity. They knew or should have known that Mr. Combs' sex trafficking operation would or could result in a criminal investigation by state and federal prosecutors for violating, among other laws, the TVPA. Defendants should have taken a cue from the federal prosecutor's arrest and prosecution of Jeffrey Epstein on or about July 8th, 2019. Oh, so they should have seen this gun like, hey, you know, Diddy and Epstein kind of operate pretty similar. Yeah. Later on June 29th, 2020, the same office indicted Epstein's co-conspirator, Ghislaine Maxwell, for conspiracy to entice minor victims to travel to be abused by Epstein. Oh, yeah, they're literally calling him Epstein. Yeah, Mr. Combs and all the defendants engaged in the same activities wow. as Mr. Epstein and Ms. Maxwell. In fact, Mr. Combs may have done worse. Ooh. Wow, they're closing strong. Here. That's hard to say, to be honest. I don't really think one can be worse than the other. Yeah, uh, neither is great. Yeah, they're well, both pretty bad. Way. You know, I don't mean to have a hot take here. <laughs> yeah, I think all this sex trafficking is no good. Yeah, no bueno. It goes against my my Christian values. Although that's what Mr. Jones said. He said he was a, he was a good <laughs> Christian man. Uh, yeah, I guess we see why. Until I got three fingers in his pooper. <laughs> 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 Uh, they were getting large amounts of cash from Mr. Combs and his associates so that the course of commercial sexual acts would escape the detection of state and federal law enforcement and prosecuting agencies. Uh, they, right, right, right. Just lists all the people again who yeah, assisted in that. Um, timely filing. Oh, now we're just talking about filing. I think. I think we got through it. I think we made it, everyone. Wow. That was an unintentionally long episode. How damning. Yeah, there. Ooh, cash transactions did not produce a clear paper trail. Oh That's man, for Diddy, maybe he'll get away with it, which is why I have to say positive things so he doesn't come kill us after this. <laughs> so oh, he doesn't no. violently grope our ass. I'm gonna be killed by Diddy. <laughs> He's gonna blow up my my Mazda. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, I I think. I think that's, yeah, because uh, now it's just saying they caused him harm. Fraud, fraud, yeah, we get it. And then... Prayer for relief. What? Is this Dear normal? holy God, <laughs> please fix my asshole and Gav Diddy give me money. I'm guessing this is a standard part of a uh, legal... It has to be. Oh, okay. A short conclusion that clearly states the nature of the relief sought. Okay. Well, how do you value your asshole? Uh, I charge by the minute. <laughs> I'm like one of those sex lines. I charge $50 a minute, baby. <laughs> That's how good the ass is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to put quarters in it before... <laughs> put quarters in my ass and pull up my arm like a slot machine. You start vibrating. <laughs> I think this guy's paying out. <laughs> All right, we we, uh, we did it. We Jesus did it. Christ, holy! That was a lot of reading. That was something. That was something. How's chat holding up? You guys oh. doing okay? That was a lot of rape, even for this show. Yeah, even for us, that was, that was a lot. That was pretty fucking intense for, Ooh, for quite that, some time. That might be worse than Corey Goods. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think there's a little bit worse uh, than lying about some blue chickens. Oh man. They must be so pissed we go harder on them than this. <laughs> yeah, well, this look, is, you know, it's easier to make fun of something that is not based in reality. This is pretty real. Yeah, no one got, you know, really hurt yeah. by Corey Good. This, uh, there were no mentions of aliens or yeah. chickens or alternative realities in this case. It was look, all David got, concrete. David got his money taken. <laughs> yeah, not his ass. Not his ass. Well, I guess partially, but. That's true, a little bit. All right. Patreon.com slash Hidden Plain Sight Pod. We've got, uh, actually, I don't know what we've got. We haven't done it yet. We'll be recording that episode tomorrow. You will get uh, 
David both Monday and Friday this yes. week and the following week, as we now know he went live today. More David. Lots of David coming your way and Hell more yeah. on the Patreon if you're into that sort of thing. For Hell 333, yeah. you can get access to like 150 fucking episodes. Yeah, go give us money so we don't have to give our ass to a record executive. Yeah, if I don't get $3, Diddy's going to take my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I can you imagine if that was the case? I'm just uh, gonna get raped because I can't come up with three dollars. I need three thirty three. I don't yeah, have. No, no. I don't have it. I left my wallet in the car. I can't get the quarters out of my ass. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, at, at Hidden Planes at Radio on Instagram, you are at Brandon Steele. Hidden on Instagram, we are at the Hidden Pod on Twitter. We're only a few people shy of a thousand. I'd like to hit a thousand followers. That on would Twitter. be pretty that feels cool. Like a good number. Yeah, we'd be a big deal. All right, guys. New episode tomorrow. Who do you mob out?